We are picking up several months after we left off last time. Um, we're now, before we were a little bit behind time, we were back still in like spring of 2018. Now we're jumping ahead into a little bit into the future, so we're now around mid-summer 2018. So, uh, you guys have pretty much all received um, messages uh, informing you that, um, well, the print, you know, the print of Chicago is going to be holding court for everyone, and a number of you have uh, different things you need to call in boons for him for. Except for me. Yeah. Although you have a boon you need to supervise being called in. Yes, I do. I must supervise Ryan calling in his boon. And uh, Derek isn't here, but in spirit, he's going to call in his boon. Yes, he is. All right. So, uh, court is being held in... A second. Yeah, so a court is being held uh, in the Succubus Club because it's going to be a uh, public court uh, setting. Um, it is being declared temporary Elysium, so no discipline use, anything like that. And uh, yeah, it is starting at 9 p.m. on a Friday night. So the club is probably going to be pretty packed. Gregson, I guess I guess you guys will all get into your clubbing attire. Mm -hmm. So, um, you don't actually have to go, Jonathan, if you do not wish to. Oh, and that raises another issue, since I'm talking to Miles now. Um... <laughs> Phrasing, Zach. <laughs> God, I hate you. This is why I stopped talking to you. Um, <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> are you still uh, living with Steven? I was about to ask, because it's been so many months. I figure I probably would have moved back home reluctantly at this point. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, well, when you get there, obviously, Lucy is no longer present. So it's just you and Alicia there. Nice. So, um, yeah. So I swapped one Tory or for another at my house. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you probably got the better one of the deal, to be yeah. fair. You know, she does know how to pick a lock. Yeah. Her blood, her generation is higher. <laughs> or lower. All right. So. But I, yeah. I would like to attend. I feel like I, that's a polite thing to do. And you just want to get out of the house at this point, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was spending a lot of time out of the house. Yeah, Alicia like was and stuff like very that. excited to have you come back. So, well, I hope that wears off soon. All right. So, uh, the three of you—well, four of you—we count Derek. Uh, drive into Chicago. Are you all using the same car, or are you... Uh, I think I'd be using my, same, my own car. Alright. So, you guys arrive at about the same time. You guys run into each other as you're all heading into the club. Good evening. Yes, good evening. Let me see what this... How uh, equipped are we? What was that, David? How equipped are we? Um, how equipped inches. do you want to be? This is Elysium. It's Elysium, so everything's pretty much in the car. Okay. Did Lucy come with us? Um, she, well, it's Ryan who has to make a claim, so yeah, she would have come with you. Alright, 
So Elysium itself is being held upstairs in the VIP room. It's going to be just sort of... Um, you guys have already sort of missed, like, the opening ceremonies just because of the time it takes to wake up and get here in the summer. Mm -hmm. um, but it's sort of an informal thing. Anyone can come and petition him over the course of the evening. So you can feed if you want to before you head up. Yeah, let's do that. All right. So, how do you want to go about this? Man's got a herd. What was that? Man's got a herd. But you're at the Succubus Club, not in Gary. Yeah. Oh, we not have done it before. Um, no. It's a little late now. Go down into the average. No, I'm fine. All right. He says with his three blood points. He's got more than three, right? What are you at? Five. <laughs> All right. Five. You should be. Okay. <laughs> Ryan, go down. Uh, Stephen will explain to you. Uh, go down into the labyrinth and feed. No, I'm fine. Oh, my God. <laughs> To be fair, he doesn't really have a good way of feeding in, because he, all he's got is Brawl, and, uh... Right, but he's got Lucy. That's true. Would you like some help from me, perhaps? I was gonna I'll have say. some blood from, uh, Jonathan, sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I meant. <laughs> Come on, Jonathan. <laughs> I was gonna say, he's got Obfuscate. He can look like Jonathan if he wants to. No, I won't allow that. <laughs> well, I, could I absolutely, like, absolutely I refuse that. Like, yeah, but I could look option. like someone attractive anyway. Is that the idea? Yeah, you could do that. So... Alright, fine. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Let's just do that. <laughs> no, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> He'll say that very calmly to you as he's frenzying and beating you <laughs> yeah, with a stick. So... <laughs> Will you just go? Clean, I'm okay. You idiot. Alright, so who do you want to turn into? I don't know. David Hasselhoff. All right. Oh, good lord. <laughs> He's gonna become the hawk. Young David Hasselhoff. All right. <laughs> Not Botox, David Hasselhoff. It's fine. Everyone's on drugs anyway. <laughs> you better. Well, help. but you didn't want to go down without being somebody else. All so right. Anyway. So, uh, give me an. Uh, all right. Give me an appearance plus um, a subterfuge. I thought the whole point of the obfuscate was that it would make my appearance good. Yeah, it um, it raises your appearance to like an average of around two-ish. Um, honestly, if you're being David Hasselhoff, I can't <laughs> <laughs> I can't say any more than two. Could I pick someone to make it higher than two? Um, if you pick a character, you get their appearance rating. Jonathan. No! <laughs> I follow you down. I, I, if, I, if I see you choose me, if I see you choose me, I refer to you that I'm following you. Alright, all right, listen, listen, here's the plan. I go dressed, uh, or looking like David Hasselhoff, but once I'm out of Jonathan's sight, I actually look like Jonathan. <laughs> Alright, give me a... <laughs> Well, actually, yeah, all right, give me a wits plus uh, stealth. Six. All right, and what I is... I like, ten minutes, someone's boy from this like, long be super pissed at me. And, Jonathan, what is your uh, perception plus alertness? Uh, see, I upgraded that specifically mm -hmm. for occasions like this, so it's five now. All right. Yeah, you spot that motherfucker and what he's trying to do. He's trying to slip away, but you stay right on it. Okay. Oh, who cares? <laughs> I refuse to let you do this. Why? I run over to you, grab my shoulder, and I go, no. How else am I going to get blood? I'm flattered, but think of something else. No, fuck off. <laughs> Come on. 
I refuse to let you do this. I will owe you a boon. Okay, fine. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Now then. Where I jot down that David owes me a life boon. Yep. <laughs> he already owes like three to Steven, so it's yeah, not that yeah. special. <laughs> Mine. All right, so Jonathan, what is uh, your appearance? Five, obviously. Appearance uh, is five, yeah. So, yeah, give me appearance plus uh, subterfuge again. David? Seven. Ah. All right. It took him a while to add. Yeah. It's okay. It's a monkey. <laughs> his intelligence remains one, however, he had to take no matter his what. Shoes form. Off and count on his toes. All right. So yeah, once you turn into Jonathan, you're pretty popular uh, in the club. Um, this is what it's like. You go up to people. Um, probably, if anything holds you back, it's your own personality. Um, you go up to people and you try explaining how hot you are, Jonathan. <laughs> but you know, it's, you, you don't quite have Jonathan's flair, but you do manage to find uh, a couple of willing, uh, young men and women to, uh, go off with you into the labyrinth for you to feed from. All right. How much do I get? Um, you are able to... Uh, if you're taking only two points from each person, then you are able to recover uh, four blood points. Can I take three from each person? Um, you can, but you're putting them further at risk. Um, leave them a little woozy. Who cares? All right. Oh, Mate. oh my god. No, 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 no. Oh, and he looks like you Mate. while he's doing this. <laughs> The prince is here. This is a museum. <laughs> do not do that. Do that. All right. So hear me. All right. So from two for each, from each person, how many do I guess? Um, for two from each person, you get four. Okay. So I find two people. I find two poxy people. <laughs> yeah. I can take three blood points from these two people. No one will care. But the prince is gonna you care. Will, you will. You will also be drunk. Don't care about two random junkies in the labyrinth, is he? You will also be drunk and addicted to drugs now. Well, how drugged are these two people, Zach? Um, well, they're going with you, so pretty messed up. Well, you didn't say that, did you? It was pretty implied. And Jonathan got it I instantly, have... so. How many blood points can I safely take? Um, two you're... from each. You're not sure about two from each, is usually the thing. No, I mean safely, as in I won't get intoxicated. Um, I mean, you have no idea, really, because you don't know exactly how much they have in their system. It's like trying to gauge how drunk you're going to be if you don't know the alcohol per volume of your spirit. I'll take one from each. All right. <laughs> I'm glad we've come to a weird agreement. <laughs> in that case, oh just just take two from one. What's the difference? It's well, nice, he wants sir. to spread it around. Yeah, I guess he gets he gets. You know, one could be on the other. It's, it's a twice, twice the chance of infection. No, all no. But if they're both drunk, maybe one's more drunk than the other. If I took two from the one who's more drunk, then I'd be worse off. But if you yeah, took two from like, the one who's less like drunk, junkies. <laughs> they're junkies, All right. My guy. They're junkies. <laughs> you are feeling. Uh, you are feeling a a strong buzz right now, but you're not actually drunk. Okay. Jesus Christ! All right. That took forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I feel like that was way longer than it needed to be. <laughs> All right. And you're only here to supervise Ryan, so you guys are waiting for him like, to finish. Well, uh, he's got a problem with my own bees, apparently. Yeah. All right, so finally, he comes back up out of the labyrinth. Um, are, are you still looking like Jonathan, or is that over now? 
Young? All right. Mate. The actual, the, actual, the actual top floor of the club is considered Elysium, so it is technically illegal for you to use Obfuscate there. Okay. I'll so stop him. <laughs> I'll run when I get, when when I get there. there. But if For he's now, obfuscated as Jonathan, then everyone will think Jonathan is the one responsible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the perfect crime. Mm -hmm. Except that I need Brian to uh, talk to the prince. Yeah, that's true. So I've got so I see Jonathan one and Jonathan two come up the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Which one do I shoot? <laughs> oh my. If you, uh, give me a perception plus, uh, empathy here. Um, that is four. You know exactly which one is which. <laughs> 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 Just by okay. looking at them, seeing the how they... The way they walk, yeah. like, their body language is complete. You know okay. exactly. Like, okay. I can tell them. The one with the shitty thing is that... Yeah, One's why? lumbering along like a gorilla, the other is. <laughs> One who thinks he's all cool, but he's really not. One who's smooth, actual and not. One who's smooth and like. One who's moving very much like a crazy Malkavian. Yeah. yeah. I'm there. <laughs> Alright, so you guys head up into the VIP room. Drop your obfuscate, head in. So. <clears throat> Yeah, so the uh, prince is there along with a number of other, uh, like, elders of the city. Um, Bannon, the guy who owns uh, the club, is there. There are a couple of others. Um, you recognize uh, the Toreador Primogen, um, Annabelle Triabel, who you met at the New Year's Eve party. And... Uh, there is also a young child there, um, who you guys recognize as the Tremere Primogen Nikolai. Mm -hmm. So, one of the uh, ghouls who checks you for weapons as you enter, um, and hopefully finds nothing. All right. <laughs> And uh, I'm assuming you supervised everyone else. Yes, so. I made sure everybody left their weapons in the vehicle. Yeah. So he announces you. And Can't we um, like leave, bring our weapons up to the door, and then are there somewhere for us to leave them? Um, they would have just. Uh, there was there is a place where they would lock them up. Um, if you wanted to bring them in. I mean, is that worse than leaving them in the car? I feel like leaving the car is even farther away if we do need them. I mean... Are you expecting to need them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I am. That's worrying. That's <laughs> what I'm that, I want a Malkavian time roll. Alright. <laughs> sure. Uh, I don't suppose you have Dementation uh, 3 yet. I've only Dementation 2. Alright. Well, then, your ability to use your insanity to kind of look into the future isn't really something you can control yet, then. That's dementation. Can I not just sense the Madness Network and see if there's a feeling of dread going on right now? Uh, no, because that's specifically what Dementation 3 lets you do. It lets you choose when you get the impressions. Otherwise, it's just whenever I feel like it. All right, fair. Okay, that's what he's going next. Yeah, so I just know. Yeah, so I it's just 10 know. experience points in case you're uh, curious. Mm -hmm. If you happen to have 10, I'll let you buy it, but. I do not have 10. Alright. So. Okay, anyway, can we get through the door now? Yeah, you can go through the door. <laughs> okay. So he relieves you of your weapons. Alright. So he comes in, um, uh, basically you guys already scheduled this, probably Steven scheduled it for you I imagine, but they know that you're here to make a request from the prince. So he... Yes, my people call their people. <laughs> Your people is Terry. I know. <laughs> yes. Unless Jonathan was still uh, living with you, then in which case, you know. No, I, I have Lucy do it. Alright. <laughs> 
picked yeah, everything. My, my people, my people are Lucy, Terry, and and Ryan and Derek. And Jonathan. And, and well, he's off on his own now. Yeah. He, he can he can be his own people. All right. So, uh, he announces you. He announces um, Ryan Farrell of Clan Malkavian with a request to place before uh, His Highness the Prince of Chicago. So, David, please tell me you remember what the request was supposed to be. Yeah, sorry, my brother came in. The, is this the thing where I was asked to spend my life? Yeah. Sure, what was the request again? <laughs> Uh, Jonathan, give me a, uh, charisma plus, uh, charisma plus performance. For me? Yes, for you. Why from me? I'll, I'll explain it in a second. Can I not charisma ask and character? captivating one performance. Can I not ask out of character? <laughs> yeah, I, I assumed it was out of character. I don't know what Zach's doing here. Uh, Jonathan is able to step forward and fill the breach so that you're able to inform him in character. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. No. Just, I, don't to, I don't remember either. You're so handsome when you walk in, you know, every, all eyes are basically on you as this goes on. And so, uh, so yes, um, so what you're supposed to ask for is that Logan will sort of approve and support the uh, re the re the rebuilding of downtown Gary and um, and and invest as well, I believe, right? Oh, yeah. in Gary, yeah. was it? Yeah, because because uh, we're gonna rebuild after after the fire started by the tanker murderers. Okay, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> Those rogues. Well, really step, about. Ryan, Ryan rushes to even the side. He's like, "Yeah, all right," and he steps off to the. All thing. right. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So, uh, what's the proper what's the proper way to step in front of the prince? Do you get down on the knee? Do you genuflex? Do you bow? Um, you should just be Slapstick. as submissive and respectful as possible. <coughs> it depends how important right, you are, so, what you're required to do. But being a neonate. Okay. So, yeah. So I'm a neonate. So I'm a kowtow to you now. <laughs> All right. And then while my face is still pressed against the floor, I'll be like, I would like to request that you help the reconstruction effort in Gary after the fire. With your great power, O oh Prince. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Bless us with your grace. All right. <laughs> so he seems uh, pretty impressed. Uh, give me a <laughs> give me a manipulation plus subterfuge, since I'm assuming you don't actually buy into this. That's actually a pretty good roll. It's uh, six. <laughs> All right. So. Uh, he, he seems amused by the theatrics. Uh, so after a little bit, he kind of motions for you to rise and uh, basically, you know. All right. I'll yeah. Go. So he says, uh, is there anything you wish to say? Out of character. What else should I be saying? <laughs> I don't know. I'm, um, did he? Oh, did he? Didn't mention the life thing. Is that what? Is that oh, okay? so is this no. So like, I was uh, the way I was going about it was that uh, I should leave the life boon implied because saying that this prince owes the likes of me a life in front of everyone else would be rude. He's already declared it though. He's already declared it. So by you declaring it, it means that everyone knows it's. It's spent. It's so paid you're, off. You're gonna You've got no pay. collateral. Yeah. Uh, Ryan will say, this will, of course, 
this will of course leave us uh, even. <laughs> Uh, all right. He nods and says, of course, I would be happy to assist you in any way that I can with my considerable domain. And he gives you absolutely no specifics, but, uh, by the way his tone finishes up, uh, he's indicating that that's it. All right, so. well, I'm satisfied. <laughs> I was forced to ask this of him anyway, so I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Ryan will, will happily, will happily you drop back. back over to Steven. Right. I will have my people call your I, people. My people will call your people and tell you exactly what we would like. And my people will go downstairs to get dinner. One sec. All right. All right. So not long after um, you're finished talking to the prince, is there anyone else you want to talk to while you're here in Elysium? Looking at me. I mean, Ryan. Jonathan, no, Jonathan doesn't have anything. Derek needs to do his thing. Yeah, Derek basically does his stuff uh, off screen. Um, well, we'll chat around. Um, I'm going to avoid Nikolai, obviously. All right. But I may speak with Annabelle since we have All right. seen her before, and I seem to be surrounded by Toreador. <laughs> Jonathan, are you going to? Also speak with Annabelle. Uh, do I have much of a reason to? I mean, no. She is your primogen, and obviously you guys are sticking around for at least a little bit. I think I'm trying to make small talk with her then. Right. Nothing important, just chatting in general. Yeah. All right. You could go up to the Tremere uh, primogen, who for some reason the Tremere in your party is trying to avoid. <laughs> Hmm. I, I for some reason, I um, there's something in my in my heart that tells me not to. I don't really know <laughs> what. Like some sort of previous experience, almost. Yeah. So um, I, I would also like to introduce myself to Bannon as one businessman to another. All right. Yeah. So um, we'll start with uh, Is it Brennan. Is it Bannon or Brennan? I, um, I think it might be Brennan. Okay. I think Bannon's the Trump guy. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's, all, it's all coming. You know, it's all coming. Uh, not anymore. I think he got kicked oh, out. Oh, did he get one of the ones yeah. that got kicked out? Okay. All right. So, uh, Jonathan, we'll start with your small talk. Uh, give me just a charisma plus uh, empathy. That would be seven. Actually, it would be charisma plus etiquette, probably. Oh, that's an eight. Have you noticed how <laughs> polite I am? And <laughs> polite. Just imagine Jonathan walking around with that sort of look on his face like, I am a handsome man. <laughs> I just imagine Ryan trying to do it and not really knowing how. He's like, have you, and it's just have you, no, I mean, have you noticed how, how I'm, I'm in a hot. <laughs> <laughs> in a oh. voice, in a very whiny voice, but I'm hot. <laughs> He's like, uh, it's like that episode of uh, Always Sunny where they're speed dating. <laughs> he goes up looking like Jonathan. He's like, have you noticed how hot I... Uh, damn it. <laughs> and <then> he just... <laughs> hits stop watch goes away. <laughs> I'm back. Hey, he's back. All right. So, um, yeah, so you acquit yourself very well. Uh, speaking with Annabelle, who mentioned that she was very impressed by your entrance. You looked very, uh, you know, dashing. Me, yeah? Uh, no, <laughs> absolutely not. Um, and basically she chats with you about your book. Um, she seems to have read it, oddly enough. Oh, thanks, I worked really hard on it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Ryan is right behind Jonathan, like, answering. Hey, David, you don't have a book. What you wrote is a manifesto, technically. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make that one clear. And just every other page is a circle with an X to it. <laughs> yeah, sure. All right. So, uh, Stephen, give me, uh, do you want to talk to him about anything specific, or are you just trying to introduce yourself? No, I'm just introducing. All right. Um, I, I'm not a big small talker. 
Yeah, so just give me a charisma plus etiquette from you as well. All right. You're not as polite as Jonathan is. No, I'm not that suave, and I I wouldn't even attempt to be. I'm an, I'm an, old, I'm an old British fart, so... <laughs> yeah, you acquit yourself pretty well. Um, so, and Ryan, as you are trying to interrupt Jonathan and Annabelle, uh, Nikolai approaches you. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to notice without noticing. <laughs> All right. That's and, a, I may, oh, and I aspects because I want to hear what's going on. All right. That's a good point. <laughs> Is Jonathan also aspects? <laughs> uh, I think that's almost always on by default. All right. So everyone starts aspecting to listen so, to this shit. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I want to. I want to hear what's going on over there. All right. Which is Nikolai? So Nikolai approaches you, and says, uh, "I have a matter to discuss with you." about the repayment of the favor you owe me. Who was Nikolai again? The Tremere regent that you owe a boon to. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and Brian's like, who are you again? <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> who are you? <laughs> yeah. So he says, perhaps we should uh, speak outside, and uh, if you would be so kind as to bring your coterie with you. I look around at all the people aspecting me right now, and like, yeah, good idea. <laughs> so he goes outside. No, I don't. I don't. Um, I don't bother to call the guys because I know they're listening. All right. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I assume you guys had yes, after. Yes, of course. We walk out with you. All right. So, uh, you guys head outside into a alleyway outside the club, and uh, so, as soon as you guys are all out there, let's see. So. Uh, since not all of you have been uh, introduced to him officially before, he kind of directs his gaze towards the two of you that he hasn't, you know, directly met. That would be what, me and Derek? Uh, and Jonathan. I don't think Jonathan ever met him. No. Well, I don't think also, so... He says, uh, you are here by command, and it is wise you chose to come. Perhaps we may all benefit from this. You are relative newcomers to the kindred of the city. As such, you can be of use to me. I am Nikolai. I lead the clan known as Tremere in this metropolis. Also, I am one of the true rulers of Chicago. Look upon me, for it is not often you will see my ilk. Steven desperately tries to roll <laughs> his eyes, okay? I'm just, um... Oh, good idea. Yeah, I'll do the same. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a whole, I'm a whole British non-reacting here. All right. He says, to business. Uh, believe it or not, there is a traitor to the Camarilla in Chicago. Once a member of my very own clan, he has fallen under the influence of the Sabbat and is now a danger to us all. He is aware of many kindred in Chicago, and they are incapable of stopping him. But you are unknown to him. It is my hope that you can take him unawares, surprise him, and kill him. If you do this for me, you will have my personal gratitude. Uh, more importantly, you will have the gratitude of one of the primogen of this city, and the thanks of the leader of Clan Tremere. And he basically gives a pointed glance over towards you, Ryan, pretty much letting you know this is the obviously the repayment of your boon. Done. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I guess I'll this person, you want this person captured or killed. Uh, he said killed. Um, Easy. So I'm gonna. Okay. So wait, I need a little more information. Mm-hmm. Um, since I don't think we're uh, has a blood hunt been called upon this person. Do we have permission from the prince to kill this individual? <clears throat> uh, 
All right. He says, you speak as if you have a choice. Consider this, then. If you choose not to accept my gratitude, uh, do you wish my hostility instead? I figured I already had that. I would not <laughs> say aloud, but I'm thinking to myself, I assumed I already had that. Um, yeah, but if there's no blood hunt, we might get in trouble for killing him. So is there a blood hunt? Do not allow yourself to be observed. All right, sure thing. At this point, I will take out my cell phone to <laughs> message and start recording. All right. Give me a uh, dexterity plus, uh, well, I guess probably wits plus subterfuge. That'd be four. All right. Yeah, so he doesn't seem to take uh, notice of you Okay. as you do it. All right. So he then adds, uh, for those of you seeking training in the arts of magic, I can arrange something. We are always looking for those of other clans that are willing to learn our ways. What? <laughs> You actually say that? <laughs> <laughs> I can see why my sire was on to this guy. I look at Steven. Does he know who moment. I am? Um, he is given no sign of knowing, but you feel like he must. He must. And you know that that is like the most bold-faced fucking lie. So my eyebrows... They clearly are not. Yeah, I, my eyebrows go up because I'm just like... I, I look at Steven with a quizzical expression. Like, is that normal? And I will give a little shake of my head no. <clears throat> uh-huh. Um. Hmm. But I won't say anything. All right. So, this person you want uh, dealt with, do you have any more information about him? Your kindred is known as Everich. He is only in Chicago for a brief period, so you will have to kill him tonight. I know that he commonly visits a bar in the Rack, a place known as The Cave. You should seek him there. If you arrive early, an ambush might be in order. As to how you will know him, and he produces an old bent photo from the breast pocket and tosses it uh, over to Ryan. Um, and it is... I take a look at it and then set it on fire. I've already recognized No! <laughs> <laughs> if you do that, I stop you. Uh, give me a... Uh, give me I a dexterity. I don't actually do that. Alright. Okay, good. Alright. So, if you guys are willing to roll for it, So, if you guys want to look at it, um, Steven has a chance of recognizing this guy, so give me an intelligence uh, plus a cult. Seven. Yeah, so this is actually a publicity photo of the magician more well-known as Harry Houdini. <laughs> so I say, you want us to kill Houdini? He nods. He uh, then adds, to those of the Tremere, know that you will have done us a great service. You will have the gratitude of the clan elders as well. And he doesn't direct that specifically towards you. He seems to just be speaking to the Coterie in general. Uh-huh. And actually, there are now secret messages that need to be passed out. So, oh my God. Okay. I am going to do so. Everyone is going to get a little message. We're all going to just kind of silently read it all together. And then move on from there. <laughs> okay. Okay. I have more questions for him, but I'll wait till after I read this message. All right. And I need to get in contact with my sire. All right. Because I seriously, highly doubt we're going to have... I, I know I know Nikolai's under suspicion from the clan. How can he be like, oh, clan elders are going to be like... Uh, anyway. All right. I got all sorts of red flags about this. 
All right. Oh, Miles, you're so fucked. <laughs> no, why, why would you know? <laughs> oh, there's mine. Oh, my God. There's more on the back. Um, okay. Mine's not really loading. Hang on. God damn it. Miles has no idea. My message isn't loading. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not a good sign. Wait until it finishes. You'll see. <laughs> Uh, could you send it over Facebook or something instead, maybe? Uh, it's not loading on Discord. Yeah, let me... <laughs> oh, the suspense is killing me. Okay. Alright, I will log on to Facebook and then send it to you through that. Or email, it will also work. Uh, you probably wouldn't read the email, though. <laughs> wow! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not you. Can you imagine Zach being like, uh, Miles? Are you ready? <laughs> Alright, I sent it to you. Okay, I'm checking Facebook. Apparently it's just my computer in general that's completely fucked. But I got it on my phone instead, so that's fine. Alright. So let's see here. Alright, we'll give Miles a chance to read his. Mm, right. And then we'll continue. Haha, <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> How do I receive that message, though? Do I just, like, get it in my mind? Um, everyone, uh, you know, just gets feelings. It's, you know, there's no words spoken. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, am I just getting a feeling, Don't, too? you know. Oh. Okay. Everyone just, you know, stuff okay. happens. Okay, stuff happens. Right. Messages right. are I had, received. I, I had some more questions for him, if that's fine. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah, if anything you want to say, you know, out loud, you can still right. do so. What kind okay. of name is this guy? What was that? Oh, you go first. Okay. So I ask him, how can you be so certain this person is guilty? And if you are so certain, how come you can't go public with it? Um, it is a, he is a member of my own clan, and we do not wish the publicity of one of our own being subject to a blood hunt. Rest assured, the evidence is absolute. Is so wrong! <laughs> the evidence is absolute, and that is all you need to know. His guilt has already been determined by the clan elders. What powers does he have? He has mastered uh, the arts of thaumaturgy, which, as uh, if you have encountered any Tremere before, know is a versatile art. I do am not familiar with all of the paths that he knows, as he has been a rogue for some time, but expect occult powers to be at his disposal. Says if there is nothing else. All right. Then he. Uh, right, come on, give him something. Give him something. Keep him talking. He Why? Will, he I, will depart. Yeah, I have. I have no. I don't. I don't even know what this is. I'm just all sorts of confused. We're trying to come up with a question. You're like, oh, I wish I asked him. Yeah. So you guys feel. Um, momentarily um, a little bit confused, just sort of dazed. Um, 
David, it just blends, or for um, Ryan, it just blends right in because he's already like buzzed. Yeah. But you guys feel a little bit intoxicated for a little bit, and then you just kind of look around and you find that Nikolai is gone. Right, let's go somewhere else because I want to go through my recording here. Okay. Yeah, um, I'm gonna. I'm. Is my sire available? Um, she has already left the city, but you can get in contact. Say, you can I send her a say, message. Can I call her or something? Um, you can't call her directly, but you can send her a message. Okay, she I should. am sending her a message. All right. Because this is just all sorts of wrong. Mm-hmm. Because I am telling Quite you right true. now, this is not how the clan takes care of its own. <laughs> I, I, I he had to have known I, who I am. He had to have known. Ryan went there. Uh. Ryan went to talk to him. He was uh, him. he was way too nice. That's not how Tremere's treat each other. Um, there, this is all sorts of wrong. This is all sorts of wrong to me. <laughs> all right. I, I'm not killing Houdini. So, uh, <laughs> all right. And Jonathan, you wanted to check your phone, right? After you were well out of earshot for him, and I'm okay. sure we are out of earshot. Yes, uh, you find that uh, there's no recording going. Um, it looks like you deleted it. Oh, how amazing. Yeah. All right. What a shock. All righty. Um, so I'm going to assume my sire is going to not get back to me on this. Um, Wait, hold on. It looked like I deleted it. Yes. Can I recover it? Um, like you fully deleted from, it. From my reason, you my might be. Deleted I was going to say, did you write over it? Give me your. Give it hasn't your been written phone. over it, but yes, you could recover it. Give me, give me your phone. With a great deal of effort. Give I'll me. Just your delete phone. my porn first, and I'll give it to you. <laughs> and he's going to be looking at the deleted content, though. That's not going <laughs> to do anything. It's not going to happen. Fuck, you're right. <laughs> all the deleted content off of there. So yeah, let me let me let me do my little magic things with this. Um, that's gonna take yeah, it's yeah, gonna take like hours to well. do it. Yeah, I mean it is something that you can get done eventually, but it's not really something you should worry about tonight, probably. Okay, so that's fine. Just don't add anything into your phone so it doesn't get so no no downloading no no more downloading of porn. You understand? I know it'll be a sacrifice, but we just we don't want to overwrite that data. That's all I'm saying. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, did anybody else feel weird or get any weird sensations or thoughts in their head when speaking to Nikolai? I will ask the group. Hmm. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay so, yes. yes. So, yes. All right. First of all. I did. I let did. me explain to you all that we are not going to be killing Harry Houdini. That Nikolai well, is under suspicion from my clan, <laughs> and I have been warned to stay away from him, which is why we do not interact. Why he did this with me here, knowing that my sire is after him, is bizarre. Mm-hmm. So... It's weird that he is trying to say it's Houdini that the elders are after when you know, this is bizarre. Anyway, <clears throat> so the question is, do we go to the cave and meet Houdini and see what his side of the story is? No, let's just kill him. <laughs> Ryan? It's faster, isn't it? Wait, Lucy's with you guys, right? So, um... She immediately uh, basically intervenes and says, we don't kill people anymore, Ryan. What? Since when? Wait, anymore? Hold on. <laughs> well, Ryan used to kill people all the time. He was a... Yeah, he was but said, a yes, but Lucy said we. Well, you know, because they're a couple now. She was using the royal we. Yeah. So she says, we'll try and, we'll do what Steven says, and we'll try and, you know, figure out what's, what's going, going on. Because I, I really am not comfortable with this. 
Sure. <laughs> and, of course, you know, two steps bloodbound, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll give, I'll give Lucy a wink. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan's mind is the chess <laughs> board on which the elders play. <laughs> So we'll eventually want to talk to this person, at least. Yeah, no, I think we need to talk to Houdini. I agree. So I, I suggest we go and find him where Nikolai has said. I'm just very confused where he did this with. But... All right. And, and the pompous attitude he displayed. As if he did not know I was a premier. Was that an insult? <laughs> I need to create one more image slide to show really quick because I forgot to do it before we started. All right. So, the question then becomes, what did he promise the two of you in your head? Well. Since I know, since I know he was in contact with all of us. We well, don't he promise you first. We don't know that. I mean, I do. It's a fair assumption. First of all, what did he promise you? What did he promise me? He didn't promise me anything. He told me to uh, not endanger myself, which makes me think he's told you two to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that assumption is correct. He did. Yeah. Okay. So. That's not happening. What he, now. <laughs> well, of course it's not. Yeah. What he promised me in return for returning alone, quote unquote, was that he would teach me the ways of the clan, all oh. of your magics, all of your thaumaturgy. You would be hunted down and killed by clan premier. I would assume as much. Yeah. So, Ryan, what did he promise you? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I'll look at Lucy. <laughs> she just kind I'm of not looking Steve in the eyes, by the way, just, you know. She says she didn't receive any sort of messages. Well, yeah, but then I'll get into that. She looks over and she says, Ryan, did you receive a message from him? No. Yeah, he, I mean, he wouldn't lie to me. Kind of hugs him. All right, there I'm I go. back. <laughs> all right, I don't, I don't trust that at all. <laughs> <laughs> as someone, and I think David will confirm this, as someone who's seen all the messages, obviously of all the people, David's the one you should be suspecting. Yeah, yeah. I just, I don't. You know. Yeah, if of all the people, it would be me. Out of character, obviously. There's yeah, something. I mean, like, it's obvious. It's always going to be me, let's be honest. <laughs> If you saw what Zach sends me, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. That's, uh, that's worrying. All right. So, Miles, so, you're so yeah, fucked. It is worrying. Uh, I'm so fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I so fucked? You're fucking dead. He's going to complete what Mary the Black started. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are heading to the We're cave? We're heading to the cave to talk All to right. Alright. Fucking so you guys, with the shit. So you guys have been to the cave before. It's easy to find. Um, so, uh, yeah. So the cave is owned by Horace Turnbull, a Malkavian, who usually is sort of anarch aligned. So was this... Carriage guy, is he the guy that staked himself and put himself in a box and escaped? Um, that now that you're guy? putting it all together, yes, it does okay. seem does like that seem same right. guy. Alright, okay. Um, so, among uh, the kind, the club is popular with sort of macho male types. Motorcycle gangs frequent the bar. Hmm. Blue-collar workers come Thank in. Thank you. <laughs> well, you're not inside yet. No. <laughs> So the interior of the club does resemble a cave. It is in the basement of an old building and can only be reached by a walk down stairway leading into a corridor decorated with antique door knockers. 
Um, oh wait, here we go. So yeah, the cave is easy enough to find. You have heard of the place and know that the anarchs frequent the bar. You find the walk-down entrance, which has nine choppers parked in front of it. They are state-of-the-art machines, all in black. Uh, you walk down the street-level stairway to a basement corridor. You pass through a corridor lined with door knockers in the shape of mermaids and lion's heads. Coming to a swinging door, you enter the main room of the cave. There are at least a dozen men seated in the room. Eight of them are wearing the road colors of the Outlaws, a biker gang you have heard about. Uh, the others seem to be working class types. None of the photograph, none of them look like the photograph that Nikolai gave you. Uh, the psycho gang looks up at you, at you as you come in, giving the group the once over. Amen. They then go back to watching the match. And probably none of us look like we belong here except maybe Lion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, they go back to watching the match. There are two men hunched over a chessboard at one end of the bar. One is a hulking figure, at least six foot five inches and 250 pounds, wearing outlaw colors. The other is a tall man with a narrow pinched face. He's wearing casual clothes, a sports shirt, and jeans. And you do recognize him as Horace. As you enter, the thin man moves a piece on the chessboard. The biker growls ominously, but then shrugs, reaches forward, and topples his king. You win again, Horace, he growls. Then more reluctantly, he adds, good game. He then gets up, turns around, glares briefly at you, and then snaps, So what do you want, road kills? I would like to speak with Horace for a moment. So, uh, Horace kind of bows to you and, uh, steps back. And, uh, Big Jim Cat moves to block your way. He says, You're not getting through that easy. You want to talk with the boss man, you're going to have to play us first. Yes, I'm hoping. <laughs> <laughs> unless, I got you, this. unless you'd prefer something more physical. Um, I got this. Yeah, bring it. Right. I don't actually say that, just to be clear. Um, so, uh, sure. Yes. All right. Just so you guys know, the role for chess is intelligence plus chess. None of you probably would have. I do My have role is four. Analytical. That would apply. So I'm happy to sit down and let Jonathan. I don't know what's your specialty, Jonathan, in intelligence. In intelligence, it is literature. Okay. All right. I'll so. <laughs> <laughs> Will he allow an advisor? <laughs> um, I mean, you guys can consult between yourself, but since it's the same role for both of you. It's just in case I get a better role, I figure. Yeah. Yeah, occasionally, yeah. That's fine. All right. So, let's see here. All right. find out exactly what the challenge is here. All right, there we go. So, the game begins. Do you want to play as uh, lights or darks? Uh, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be black. I'll let right. go first. Why would you play black? Black is a disadvantage. <laughs> Part of a cunning strategy. Part of a cunning strategy. I don't know what it is, but a cunning wait, strategy yeah. to be objectively worse. Yeah. If you have the choice, you obviously pick white. I don't know. I was just mixing it up. I'm gonna lose anyway. Come on. I need there to be a reason. I need there to be a reason. It was because I chose black. All right. All right. So can I do small talk while we're playing chess? Yeah, you can. And ask him about, you know, that guy, Erich, who, uh, who, who st staked himself and wrapped himself in a box and, you know. Are you going to mention that he staked himself? You don't know if this guy's a vampire or not. I'm going to point that out. Horace? 
Horus is, has stepped back. He's oh, not. Oh, I thought I was playing. No, him. you're not playing him. You're playing the biker. Oh, I'm playing. The, I'm playing Big Jim. Yeah. It's gonna be even more embarrassing when you lose. Oh, okay. <laughs> it will be more embarrassing. Big Jim, but you know. All right. I thought I was playing Horus. Sorry. No. Okay. <laughs> Whatever you're writing down there, it just can't be good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you want to make small talk with Big Jim? Uh, I don't need to make small talk with Big Jim, no. All right. <laughs> you're just going to silently play? I'll just silently lose to Big Jim. <laughs> I would like to use aspects to make sure it doesn't cheat. All right. Uh, you know, it, even if he does, I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> what is your perception plus public. alertness? Five. We're going to be pummeled. All right. You got to have more faith in yourself, Stephen. Come on. Uh -huh. You can beat this tough bag of dude. I believe in you. No, he's rolling a lot more dice than me. Uh, you actually, as the game is going on, you think you see him. Like, there's kind of a press of bodies around, and you kind of lose track of the pieces for a second, but it looks like one of the pieces on his side has moved during Steven's turn. Can I prove it? Uh, not really. Then I will say nothing. All right. Take out, take out our phone, start recording. <laughs> I'm going to upload this to YouTube later. Upload this to YouTube. Sick chess <laughs> match. <laughs> okay. Okay, so Jonathan can't take any more information on his phone. He risks overwriting the thing. So right. I'll start recording them off. All right. Okay. You will upload it to YouTube. That actually reminds me. I'm glad you said that. Um, you did get, over the course of the months, you did get a message actually from um, the friend of Lucy's that you got in contact with about the, uh, the entity that's been stalking you. Yeah. Um, she did do more research. Um, she did find out that apparently um, she does believe that the pills uh, are probably just kind of a wild goose chase. Um, she couldn't find any evidence that they that that was based on anything. Um, and she also did advise you um, to record things as often as you can in order to notice the any electronic like disturbances. Okay, well then, sure, I should be recording 24-7, shouldn't I? Yeah, I mean, that's what she recommended. Okay, so if my recording that I was, I guess, already doing is on this match, then maybe we can look at it later. All right. Maybe he's lying or cheating. Dude, it'd be spooky if you were watching this later and then you saw Slenderman also yeah, watching the chess say, match. Yeah, I was going to say, when the electronic interference comes in and Slenderman appears. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Alright, so, the match is finally over, as you guys just kind of went in silence. Mm -hmm. uh, he did win. Of course. <laughs> I, figured. I figured he was going to. You got, you did put yourself at a disadvantage by make it, letting him go first. Um, you did get barely the number of successes necessary for him to respect you. <laughs> you got exactly that number just on your last... At least I've got Big Jim's respect. That's right there. That's my success for the evening. See, if you had gone first, it's just whoever gets to 12 first. If you had gone first, you would have... I would have had a slight advantage. Yeah. But he had way more dice than me, so... <laughs> he had way more dice than me. So he would have still won. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh... So I will look expectantly. 
So he says, who are you uh, looking for? Horus. I wish to speak with Horus. All right. So he uh, stands, he kind of motions Horus over, and Horus steps forward again and says, how can I assist you? And Big Jim is standing yep. there, and I will say, um, I, is it okay to speak in front of Big Jim? I didn't auspex him or whatever, so I don't know what. Choose your words carefully. Um, I was here several months ago, and there was a... I recall the disturbance. Ah. Um, <laughs> so the individual uh, upon whom we were laying bets as to his escape techniques... Ah, uh, yes, Mr. Etheridge. Yes. Uh, do you know where I could find him? Um, Horace kind of... Uh, shrugs his shoulders, but Big Jim nods and says, Yeah, Ethridge. He was in here earlier this evening. Sprang for a few drinks, did a few tricks, shot the wind for a while, then he took off. Uh, said he had to meet an old friend of his down in the loop. Around 11.30. Uh -huh. He did that regurgitating razors trick. Damn, that guy's good. I never have figured out how he gets all those razors on that barbed wire. Um, hmm. Okay, so the loop. Then he and says, how about another drink? And he goes over to the bar. Uh, no, thank you. Horace, once he's away, will add in, if you really have to find him tonight, try Ye Old Magic Shop on the 300 block of South Michigan. Thank you. So Big Jim returns with some brewskis and offers them to you. Can we politely decline, or is this something that we must? I mean, you can try and politely decline, I guess. Uh, I will take one. After. If you want to decline the six foot five. It's just, it's easier. I'll <laughs> take it and take a swig, smile. Mmm, good. All right. If you're going to pretend it's good, I think that calls for performance roll, Stephen. Well, I'm not attempting to. I'm obviously just being nervous and just taking it because Jim is huge. Yeah. So I'm just going to. You've be already got his respect. Okay. So. All right. And I don't vomit in front of him. So. Yeah. So as you're about respect. as you're about to leave, he hands you a few road beers. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I'll give them to Terry. <laughs> <laughs> You'll probably get them to when you're out of sight, right? Yes. Yeah. So I'll just not not I'm immediately. I'm carrying my little six pack and, you know, yeah, <laughs> I give them a little salute, thumbs up, hey, finger guns, whatever, <laughs> and we get out of there. All right. Jesus Christ. Apparently Big Jim is my friend now. <laughs> All right. No, no, he's going to row. you got to say it properly. Yeah. So you guys, uh, yeah, you get out of the so cave we'll alive. get out of there and I'll... Stick the beer in the trunk and we'll head to you. What do you mean, get out alive? I mean, there were a lot of bikers in there. Yeah. I'm an uh, old British guy. I would have been beaten to a pulp. You're a vampire. Uh, there were a lot of bikers in there. There were a lot there. of, you know. And Horace. Yeah, but you, would, yeah. you wouldn't have died. I mean, I mean yeah, that was France. Horace was there. You don't know what he would have done. Yeah. So, anyway. If you lost worse at chess. <laughs> I cannot respect you. He is Malkavian, so. Horse is Malkavian? Yeah. Good to know. I figured he was an anarch. Apparently, uh, Malkavians just kill people whenever they feel like it, uh, so. Not anymore, not when yeah, they are the Toreadors, they don't. Alright, so where is. Do we know where Yield Magic yeah, is? Yeah, he gave you the address. Oh, okay. So we'll, uh, we'll head on over there. 300 block of South, of South Michigan. 300 block South Michigan. In the loop. Where he was going to meet. Yeah. The person at 1.30. What time is it now? Um, It is a little bit. It is around 11.30. So we can head on over there? Yeah. Okay. I don't know what we're going to find. So, the old magic shop that sounds like Meiji kind of And it's spelled with like E's at the end of the word. So it's like ye olde magic shoppy. And is magic with a K? 
No, it's not. Okay. <laughs> They're not that pretentious. Okay. <laughs> that would have the technocracy just beating down your fucking door. <laughs> I feel like you <laughs> magic with a K! All right. All right. So, uh, it is a battered old storefront building with antique woodwork decorating the outside. Looking upon it, you might think it was a shop out of the late 1800s or an antique building such as the ones seen on the main streets of amusement parks like Disney World. Oddly, for this time of night, the shop is open. There are dim lights on inside, and you can see someone moving around. Shall we enter? Um, I guess. All right. Yeah, let's do the bell on the door or something when yep. we open it? Okay. So the inside of Ye old Magic Shop is a dust-filled relic of a bygone age. All kinds of magical props sit on the shelves. Their colorful paint just uh, penetrating the hue of time. The interior is a maze of, high, high, of head-high shelves in bins filled with close-up tricks and old books of magic. There is a counter towards the back with an antique cash register on it. There is a curtained doorway behind it. As you enter, a man looks up from where he has apparently been browsing through a book bin. He is wearing a rumpled white suit, blue shirt, and oddly enough, a battered pair of tennis shoes. He has a straw fedora perched on his head and a camera and a tape recorder slung around his neck. Is this Scotty Cartwright? No. <laughs> right. Thank God. So the man begins to give you the once over. Before either uh, you or he can do anything, there is a muffled whoomp from behind the curtain. A thick billow of smoke pours out, and then you hear coughing and wheezing. A withered old man staggers out, thumping his chest. He looks up, sees you, and smiles sheepishly. Sorry for the noise and smoke, folks, he wheezes. At my age, you tend to forget things. I'll have to remember to use a little less flash powder. But I'm the proprietor, Walter Dent, Esquire. What can I do for you folks? Um, oh. Plants with the guy in the blue shirt and the white trousers. Yeah, that guy, the guy in the white suit, mumbles something and goes back to pawing through the book bin. The old man, Dent, looks at you inquiringly. All right, so I'll wander over toward him. So, do you do you know uh, someone named Eric? Er Eric? I don't know what you say his name. All right. So, um, he kind of nods, and then he looks over at the, uh, the guy in the suit, who seems to be like a reporter of some kind, and he says, why don't we, uh, step in the back? So he leads you back through the curtain. Um, and as you pass through the curtain, you find yourself in a small hallway with two doors, a low haze of smoke still fills the corridor. The old man Dent takes out a key and unlocks the door on the left and ushers you in. You are in a large black room. It is empty except for two items, a circle inscribed on the floor and a brazier in the middle of it. So, in any case, gentlemen, to business, the old man Dent says. Let's be honest with each other. I'm no novice and I know you for what you are. You're creatures of the night and I'm an expert in magic. Doesn't matter what's the nature of my clientele. Maybe you've heard of me and you want some research done. Maybe you're curious gawkers. What's the story? We are looking for Erich. Um, because we, we really must speak with him. As you, which you are so well aware, you also know that he is of our kind. And I was told that he was meeting someone here at 11.30. Uh, so, um, as you say that, you hear a, um, like, you hear your own voice, but it seems kind of weirdly high-pitched and distorted to you, um, and then, like, some mild cursing from behind the, oh, the door. Oh, has been recording us. So, uh, the guy goes up, opens the door, and you can see the the guy with the tape recorder mm -hmm. uh, basically Stay running out of the hall. So I will... Okay. I'll give chase, I think. And I'll prepare... Uh, hang on. How, many, how late is it? Um, it's 11.30 at this point. How 
MTR the streets. Could I get away with using celerity? Um, he's still in the shop right now, so yeah, you could use celerity. Right, then I'll prepare celerity to make sure I can catch him. Okay. Give me a strength plus athletics. Newly upgraded to four. All right. So I pet my vice before I start running. Yeah, with your celerity, you're easily able to chase him down uh, just as he's getting out of the store. So once Jonathan basically runs off after this guy, Dent turns to you, he's like, young people are always just running around everywhere. And he leads you back inside. Ryan, are, did you go with Jonathan, or are you staying there? Yeah, I'll, I'll go in with the guy. All right. Yeah, so he leads you guys back inside while Jonathan handles this. Okay. Um, so anyway, as I was saying, um, Eric mm -hmm. was supposed to meet here. Has he, has he arrived? Is there a way I possibly speak with him? It's quite important. Exactly why is it important? Um, I believe there may be a threat against his life. All right. Uh, give me a manipulation plus etiquette. Because I need to know the etiquette of letting people know that there's a threat against their life. <laughs> you know, that's what it says in the adventure. <laughs> okay. You know, this is actually an official adventure, so. <laughs> Which is why people are speaking so oddly. Yeah. Well, it was the 90s when it was written, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. this is how so people talked back then. That's how people then. talked in the 90s. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So he nods and says, yeah, Etheridge was here. That reporter fellow was looking outside, and Etheridge was concerned he might recognize him. He said he was going to meet with a friend over at that nightclub, the place called the, um... The, the Succubus? The Succubus Club. Uh, took out, uh, took out of here about half an hour ago, maybe less. You see him, give him my regards. Tell him he'll have to stay longer next time he's in town. However, it's almost midnight and the shop's closing, so you'd probably better be on your way. Uh, do you um, do you need help with the reporter guy, or do you want us to take care of him? Uh, don't do anything permanent to him. I'm just gonna. And Lucy, him. Lucy kind of grabs a hold of Ryan's shoulder and says, "We would never bring any harm to him." No, there will be no physical harm done. Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so. If the reporter is there, I'd just like to remove the yeah. previous memories here, and then we'll be on our way. So, Jonathan, you run this guy down outside the street. Um, you do, like, kind of like a leaping tackle and bring him to the ground. All right, I'll pull him back in. Is it Scotty Cartwright? It's not Scotty Cartwright. Okay, thank you. You would be too I'll terrified to chase him if it were Scotty Cartwright. You would be, you'd be cowering in a corner. <laughs> I would see him. I would turn around and look, run down the other side of the street. So he's like, you know, he's like, let go of me. I'm a private detective, man. Uh-huh. I pulled him back inside the store. All right. So yeah, you just kind of hold him there. Unfortunately, um, he is as scrawny as you are. So it's like the two weeniest men in the world having a fight. <laughs> um, but you win. <laughs> um, he looks like, uh, David, you remember that, that scene in... Um, fucking savage temptation with that guy that Pierre Kirby arrests who rolled up his t-shirt <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> during the drug deal. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, so first of all, I want to know who he's working for. Yeah. He says, so when you come out, he's like, I'm a private detective. All right, so I'll go over and look him in the eye and who are you working for? Um, I'm going to resolve anything. All right, give me a manipulation plus leadership. That's seven. All right, he is uh, a wire service reporter. <laughs> so he's not. No, he's yet. not. <laughs> All right. He works for the wire service. In which case, we'll just erase his memories, which is manipulation plus what? Uh, I think it's manipulation. Um, is it? I can't remember what it is. 
I think it's manipulation plus subterfuge. It might be wits plus subterfuge, but we'll do manipulation for now. Okay, so four. It doesn't matter. He doesn't have very high willpower. Yeah, you've got him. Okay. All right. And All right. we'll be on our way, I guess, back to the Succubus Club. Do you uh, delete his recording as well? Yes, we yeah. delete his recording. All right. Yeah, David wants to know if it's time to kill him. <laughs> That's what David's doing. You're fine. Not yet is what <laughs> Zach just typed back. Shut up. Oh, you'd be nicer to him. <laughs> I, see, I got him to be quiet, though. <laughs> You're like, please be quiet. I'm like, shut up. And then he listened to me. Yeah, I'm not going to kill the mouse for you next time. <laughs> He's going to bring the mouse alive and just put it right in your lap. All right, let me look something up for David. Because he wants to use something to kill us. All right, be in your guard, Jonathan, because David's going to try and kill us. All right. Thanks for the advice. How do you know that? Um, because they're typing back and forth now. Aha. Uh -huh. It's too far away for me to actually read, but... <laughs> Good, you cheater. <laughs> And, and Zach is looking up things for David. All right. Like, discipline things. Like, All right. All right. Oh, now he's making a roll. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> so... You guys are heading to the Succubus Club? And Ryan does not attack us. Okay. So... Not yet. Okay. Um, so yes, we go to the Succubus Club, I guess. On our fetch quest for the Harry Houdini. Alright. You guys head back to Succubus Club. Has my sire gotten back to me yet? I did put, like, high importance on this. Yeah, well, she's a busy woman. She's traveling all over the place. All right. So you guys arrive back at um, the Succubus Club, and you, uh, yeah, it is pretty much as you left it. Yeah. It's a little so bit less busy is now. Is Elysium still going on? Um, no, the prince has left. Okay. Reminds me, I did actually make a. Um, since we haven't been doing the musical uh, intros, I have made a like a playlist of just sort of a general soundtrack for the game. So I'll try and remember to send that to you guys when we're finished here. Okay. Alright. So yeah, the club is, if anything, more raucous than it was a few hours ago. The band is playing full blast, and the dancers pack the floor. Quick check of Nikolai's photo, and a glance around the room, you can pick out the individual known as Ehrich. He is sitting at a table just off the main dance floor. Sitting with him is an elderly old man in a rumpled, old-fashioned business suit. As you spot him, Ehrich looks up. His eyes sweep over you for a moment, then pass on. After a few more seconds, he returns to speaking with the old man. All right, well, I guess we go up and Let's interject. introduce All right. ourselves. As you get closer to the elusive Tremere, he suddenly perks up. Turning from his conversation with, with the old man, he looks directly at your group. Uh, he studies you intently for a moment, then gestures for you to sit at the table with him. All righty, which I will do. All right. So, the kindred known as Ehrich uh, casually reaches into the air and produces a half dollar. Idly twirling it through his fingers, he looks at you for over a minute. His elderly friend has sunken back into his chair, muttering quietly to himself. Eventually, Ehrich says, Greeting, fellow kindred. 
A friend of mine called from a business you visited earlier this evening. He said you were looking for me and gave me your description. Well, you found me now. Perhaps you uh, seek me at the request of the boy mage Nikolai. If so, realize that you will be ill-used. He seeks to see me destroyed for the threat he believes I pose to the Tremere clan. As tools, he will discard you after you have served your purpose. However, you have no doubt chosen your own fate. What is it you wish of me? A way out. Yes, that would be good. You're pretty good at escaping tricky situations. So, um, obviously, we have no desire to kill you, because I am not so uh, sure of your threat. I'm going to have to quickly reset my router, so I'll be gone for like a few minutes. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Because I says, still can't read messages. He says, I sympathize with your dilemma. The one you call Nikolai is a powerful one. A friend of mine is bound to him, and there are other personal reasons. Throw in your lot with me and those of the city who stand against Nikolai. We are not without power ourselves. In any case, I promise you that once you have made a deal with that devil Nikolai, you will find yourselves ensnared in his web of evil. Well, okay. I, I need to interject here. There's no possible way I could ever ally myself with Nikolai since I know he is under observation by the clan. So... I also am Premier. I have no intention of harming you. Okay, we're back. But Can you see the messages now? So, so yes, I obviously can, yeah. we are against Nikolai. All right. He says, uh, <laughs> "Stop with this stupid flower of talking." But whatever. I know you're reading. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reading from the fucking adventure. <laughs> All right. He says, very well. My friend Gibson here has told me what I need to know. I was to meet with one more person here, but she has not arrived. She may not have been able to slip away without suspicion. I respect her caution, and so my business in Chicago is done. I must escort Gibson home, and then we may discuss our mutual desires. <laughs> okay. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Ryan's already naked. I know, I'm like, put your clothes on. I see. Do you need help escorting Gibson home? Uh, you may... <clears throat> he says, you may join us if you wish, and as he's saying that, uh, there is a commotion. So, uh, two young women are coming to the table. So, give me uh, perception plus alertness rolls. Everyone. Five. Five. Six. Come up here and sit down. There you go. You're fine. Okay. So Jonathan just kind of notices the girl's approach. You two notice that they were uh, talking with what looked to be a young man right before they came over to you. But they step out of the crowd. Uh, without warning, they draw knives and throw themselves at the old man. Before you can move, Efrich reacts with superhuman speed, grabbing both of them by the wrists and deflecting the attacks away. He tosses them back into the crowd, then grabs the old man and gets to his feet. Uh, I think we should leave now. I think so, too. Let's follow him. So you notice that they are smiling uh, slightly, the girls were. Uh, Obviously dominated. But with a glassy, unfocused look to them. I know that look. They <laughs> inflicted on others. <laughs> so you don't recognize the person that they were talking to. Hmm. Okay. Um, but he is a young man, and you would recognize him again if you saw him. Okay, so we noted him. All right, well, let's, uh, yeah, let's follow Houdini and Gibson out of the club here. All right. Do they have transportation? Um, all right. So, yes, uh, they do have a vehicle, um, and he said, obviously, we need to get out of here. Like, I have, I have a secure vehicle. All right, we'll head to back. Okay. So, um, give me a... So, you notice that there is a dagger being thrown across the club. So, it is being thrown directly at the old man. Anyone who wants to can make a dexterity plus athletics roll to try and grab it. 
Can I do a movement of the mind and focus? I'll be Mua. Yes, you can. Okay, I will do that. I will be movement of the mind and focus. Oh, okay. Spend your blood point and everything. Okay. I'll let you roll too, David, if um, this fails. Two Obviously, the telekinesis yeah. would take effect before your leap does. I also roll to try and grab it. Okay. Uh, get in my way. Yeah, actually, pretty much only one person should do the attempt to grab. All right. Fine, fine. Here, relax, Miles. Well, yeah, I know you um, spent a lot of XP five. to make your character like this, <laughs> but. <laughs> but... Um, yes. Uh, and with three successes, you're able to actually like pluck it out of the air and bring it to you. Got myself a dagger. Yes, you do. Alrighty then. Um, and then you notice that the uh, two girls who were in the club are basically pushing their way through the crowd towards you guys again, and uh, Efrich is leading the old man away okay. uh, down into the labyrinth, out of the crowd. All right. So I will have... Is Terry with us, or is he still with the car? Um, Terry would probably be waiting with the car and watching the outside to make sure no one... All right. So... He and Derek are making sure no one escapes, basically. Okay. Um... So I will leave, I'll indicate to Jonathan and Ryan to detain the two women. All right. I figure the two of them can handle that. I'll go with Terry and Dean and guide them to the car, or Terry and Derek. Um, they're not heading directly to the car right now. Right now, there's they're heading down into the labyrinth to try and basically figure out where they're going. Houdini and... Gibson, right? Yeah. That's who you're talking about. Terry's with the car. Yeah, Terry's well, with I know the where the car is. Yeah. I'm going with Houdini and Gibson to get them out right. of the thing to okay. the car. Okay. I'm assuming Ryan and Jonathan also know where the car is, but they need to stop the girls as we get away. And I'm leaving. All right. That's what I'm going to say. Stop the girls. And I'm assuming Lucy will come with me. All right. Lucy will go with you. Remind me again, can I still use stuff like Dread Case on them? Uh, yeah, you can. So let me rephrase the question. Would it be effective against them? <laughs> well, we haven't rolled yet. We, it depends on what that domination was all about. Uh, Might as well give it a try. I guess we'll find out. All right. All right, dread, dread case away then. Well, first let's do a wits plus uh, dexterity to see... Uh, what order the initiative is in. Five. Ryan, what's your wits plus dexterity? Seven. All right, Ryan is going first. You're rolling everyone else's wits plus dexterity first, though, right? Yeah. So. So is Miles going to give his? I gave mine first. Yeah, he did it. Okay, so we're done. All right. <laughs> You're first. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Well, I don't suppose I brought my staff into a club. No, I seriously doubt it. Can I delay my turn? Uh, yeah. I will delay my what turn. What for? I <laughs> well, I'm unarmed, so I'll have brawl. You do so have. I'll well, you do have a gun in your waistband, but again, you are in a chlorotic club, so that's not a good idea. So I'll wait. For you to see if your dread gaze works on one or both of them, and if not, I'll work from there. He's lying. I'll, I'll, I will attempt that. to dread gaze <laughs> one of them as I'm sort of backing away. Reasonable. I'll, 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 I'll try to dread gaze one of them. Let's just say that. All right. So, what's your roll for dread gaze? I think it's appearance plus intimidation. No. You think it's what? I think it's appearance plus intimidation. That's a seven, then. All right. Yes, you completely disable one of the girls uh, with your 
uh, Dread Gaze. Nice. And I think David ran to the bathroom, so we'll switch over to Steven. Okay. So you guys head down into the labyrinth. Um, so you guys start heading towards the exit, but you can see that there are actually people blocking the exit. Enrich seems to uh, know them because he mutters a curse. Heinz Anarchs, curse me for a novice. I didn't see them. They guard the doors. And you can see that by the exit there are several burly men um, which have cut off your means of escape. Anarchs? Okay, is, is, are there any Anarchs down here that I know? Um, not that there may be some in the labyrinth. So, Everich says, Heinz must still believe me a traitor for my activities those years ago, and perhaps he was right. However, we must get out of here now. The basement is our only chance. That's where we are. Yeah, the, the, yeah. the, so the labyrinth, these, the maze. So, these, the labyrinth. Okay. Yeah. Alrighty. Well. Okay. Alright. Let's go. Let's see. I'm on the lookout for any anarchs I might know. Alright. So yeah, you guys head into the maze itself. Um, and you're not really that familiar with the maze in uh, this no, timeline. No, I'm, not. I'm so. not in this timeline, so I got all specs on. So yeah, you guys are just wandering around trying to avoid any of the people that are trying to kill you. Mm-hmm. Alright, so... Give me a, it is, what's the roll to find your way through? It is a wits plus alertness. Okay, that's five. All right. So you begin wandering through the maze. on where you hope is going to be the way out. Mm -hmm. And as you are going through, you see uh, three uh, Teamsters appear. These look like the burly men that were guarding the doors. And as mm -hmm. soon as they see you, they start rushing forward with bats in hand. All right, well, I'm going to assume... Oh, I have a dagger, right? You do have a dagger, yes. You have a dot in the and your cane does count as basically a club. Okay. So I'm, well, uh, Houdini's got Gibson, right? Yes. Okay, so it's me. I am sorry I took so long, got sent on a mission. Alright. Mary is in combat now. Yeah, I, I think okay. it's, it's, it's an old man against three. That's why I was oh, a little Mary's surprised when you left both Jonathan and Ryan to deal with two women. <laughs> so Mary's in combat. Um, um, all right. I, if I aspect them, are they are they kindred? Um, perception plus empathy. That's four. Um, in all the excitement, you can't read their auras whatsoever. Um, all right. So, I can now move 200 pounds. Mm-hmm. Can I throw one of them against a wall? And, uh, and defend myself with the cane and the knife. All right. Give me a, uh... <laughs> You better hope they know about vampires already. All right, give me a willpower roll. Um, that's five. Because <laughs> the magic. Yeah, well, you know, uh, desperate times. Yeah. First time I've ever really had to use blood in an adventure. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so you pick up one of them and you bash him against the side of the wall. Let me find these it's guys' stats. Great, the, the, my, I use my, my thaumaturgy strength for those. Okay. So it's three instead of two. 
All right. Okay. So yeah, he's not uh, a little bit loopy after that, and the other two rush forward to attack you, and we're going to go back up to Ryan. So Ryan, you saw Jonathan. He did successfully dread gaze uh, one of the two women. The other one is still approaching you with a knife. Approaching me with a knife? Well, both of you. Okay, so this might still be that time we, we were talking about earlier where, you know, Miles. <laughs> what? <laughs> I will attempt to uh, grab the woman's wrist and wrench the knife. All right. Give me a dexterity plus brawl. Six. Uh, plus one potent, if that counts. Uh, we're not to the strength yet. Okay. Okay. So give me a uh, strength. What's your strength? At three. Okay. I'm going to get in trouble for, I'm just realizing now I'm going to get in trouble for uh, helping Houdini too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to explain. It was him or Nikolai. Which did you wish? I knew I wasn't supposed to help Nikolai. I wasn't told anything about him. Either. Yeah, so you're able to basically just... Um, you do really well. So you're able to just wrench the weapon away from her. Um, basically just do like a Vulcan neck pinch on her and she just crumples to the ground. Easy. So yeah, um, with the effects of your dread gaze, the other woman basically drops the knife and she also just kind of collapses. Nice. So you two are out of combat. All right, let's join our comrades. All right, so you guys also start heading downstairs. Um, so I'll take the knife let's first. examine the women first. <laughs> oh, well, I'll take one of the knives. Yeah, all right. So Jonathan, you're going to stay up there to examine the women? Just quickly check over if they have any, like, visible wounds or have they been sucked in the neck. All right, give me a uh, perception plus uh, medicine. Three. Okay. Um, you don't see any signs of that, but as um, you're handling, basically examining them, a bunch of other people are coming over to see, you know, what's going on. Why are these collapsed women on the dance floor? Mm -hmm. um, so you're basically surrounded by a crowd of people who are asking you, you know, what's going on? Are they all right? I don't know. Just sort of fell down. All right. Give me a manipulation plus subterfuge. Five. All right. And you're going to try and also regroup with your friends after this? Yeah. All right. So you start trying to extricate yourself, although the crowd of people is now slowing your progress considerably. Ryan, you just grab the knife and you get through before any of that mess happens. You get down into the labyrinth and give me a perception, oh no wait, it is wits plus alertness. Five. Right. I have to look up a lot of stuff about what happens to you. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, that thing that I sent you might go into effect pretty soon. Oh, cool, cool. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you're not with him anymore, Jonathan, so you're, you're safe. All right. So you round a corner just in time to see a drug deal go sour. Two bloods are reaching for their uh, guns. 
as a pack of five uh, punks is running in to jump them. Um, you also see, so they pull out the guns, and you see them start shooting, so there's now gunfire in the club. All right, well, that means I'm going to undo my gun. Uh, furthermore, there is a suitcase filled with money, which lies on the ground next to a sizable package grab of that. cocaine. Ryan, grab them both. <laughs> and is anyone look. looking at me? Um, not right now. Skate tree. What was that? You skate tree. All right. Grab if no one is looking at the suitcase, then can I take it without yeah. breaking up your skate? Yeah. I will try to do so. All right. Are you going to take the cocaine as well? Uh, does a bear shit in the woods? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, throw the cocaine into the suitcase with the money, slap it closed, get out of there. All right. So, yes, you are successfully acquiring money and drugs. Brilliant. Um, that was a completely random roll that brought up that <laughs> encounter. Um, but I think it's the most exciting, because these guys yeah. are coming at you with baseball bats, and you hear gunshots. And I hear gunshots. Okay, well, I'm um, assuming that when I... They when get I, their round. When when I left the mm -hmm. museum, I did reholster yeah, my gun. Obviously. So I do have it. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I, that's coming out now that there's gunshots. All right, so these guys, these two guys are going to attack you. How rude. And both of them do hit you. Damn, those two. Um, and are you wearing armor? Um, just my tailored whatever I had. Okay. It's probably worth four bullets in this yeah. fashion. All right. All right, so the first person does no damage to you. And neither does the second. All right. So they both hit you with bats, but because of your vampiric uh, physiology, you're not really particularly All right. impressed. All right. Um, Very nice. Um, I take out my gun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, and they once they hear the gunshots, they start pulling their weapons as well. Oh, crap. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, uh, you're up. Okay, so I'm going to take uh, fire at whoever is... All right. Dexterity plus firearms. All right. That's going to be uh, five. I'm glad that random encounter just immediately fucking escalated <laughs> everything. That's like the one encounter... It's well, a random I was encounter. like, I'm going to have to take the gun out here eventually, but then there's going to be gunshots. I'm just going to explain away. this shit. There's actually a random encounter chart for this chase, mm -hmm. and then one of the things on there is roll a normal encounter from the random encounter chart just for the labyrinth mm -hmm. in general. There is one random encounter in there that's like a fight, <laughs> <laughs> and Ryan pulled it. <laughs> so there's like a one in a hundred chance of this shit. All right. Nice. All right, so what was your dex plus firearms? Uh, five. And I have the grip and the yeah. everything. All right. So, yes, you score a hit. Uh, what is the damage on your gun? Um, I think it's five. Okay. All right. So yeah, you shoot at um, one guy, and he basically, he takes it right in the torso, and he just sort of, um, I mean, he's been shot. He basically, he's not dead, but he does crumple to the ground instantly. He doesn't seem like he's interested in continuing to fight you. Okay. Um, so obviously not vampire, because you're going to soak that up. No. Um, the other guy, the guy that you threw against a wall, he has righted himself, pulled out a gun, and so has, and the guy who's right up next to you tries to another swing with his bat, but this time he aims at your head. Alright. And he misses. Um, the guy with the gun tries to shoot you. And that is... Another miss. All right. 
and you are up again. All right, so I'm going to shoot the guy. Well, I'll probably shoot the guy with the gun. That's more of a threat to me than the bat. So. Okay. Yep, yeah, you nail him. Okay. All right. So you wing this guy, and he also goes down similarly. Um, he and the other guy you shot have basically started to crawl away, and um, seeing what's going on, the other thug basically runs over help them basically he's retreating from you okay so we'll make our way continue on yeah okay all right so ryan you are uh downstairs you've collected the money and drugs and then uh everyone starts opening fire where you are like they're pulling out submachine guns and shit so you're gonna need to give me a dexterity plus dodge they're not shooting at you but they are just opening fire There's crossfire yeah you're in the middle of it because you're trying to grab the money Five. All right. All right. Specialty, actually. All right. Um, you're still nailed. Uh, what is your... You're wearing your armor, right? Yep. All right, so what's your bullet soak? Six. All right. Yeah, you're hit um, by several gunshots, but your armor and your own vampiric uh, nature negate the damage. You're able to grab the shit and get away, and then you hear more gunshots coming from further into the labyrinth. And it's not semi-automatic, it's revolver gunshots. Yeah, it does sound like Steven's gun. You know about enough about guns to know. Nice. So if you want to head towards it, you can. I will. All right. So, Jonathan, you have just managed to get your way almost through the crowd when all of a sudden there's gunfire coming from the basement. Um, okay. So, obviously, Ryan did something. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but everyone starts to panic, and they start, like, basically running out of the club. Stampede. Yeah. Screaming. So I'm actually going to need a dexterity plus athletics for you to avoid being just caught up in the rush out the doors. Uh, what plus athletics? Dexterity. Five. All right. Yes, you managed to muscle your way through, and you actually get out into a position where you can go down the stairs uh, to check out the gunfire if you want to. This seems like a smart idea. All right. So you head downstairs. So down we go. All right. Obviously. And then you give me a wits plus athletics to find your way through the maze. Oh, doesn't he have to dodge all the crossfire? But he's not. That's in the maze. Oh, that's in the maze. Yeah. Okay. Two wits and what's the other one? Athletics. Uh, oh. alertness. Alertness. Four. There's a chance to run into the, the fire potty. Um, you're, you're actually not. the only one who finds his way through the maze perfectly. <laughs> nice. Um, so slow and steady, baby. You and Ryan, even though you're way behind Ryan, you and Ryan both reach Steven and the others at the same time. Okay. What did I miss? What happened? Well, um, I, I don't know. There was gunfire. I had to fight off a couple of goons. I, I don't know what the original gunfire was about. Um, Ryan? Ryan, what's in the suitcase? Uh, so I'm obfuscating. I'm keeping the suitcase a secret. All right, so Ryan is just completely invisible <laughs> oh, still. Oh, so, okay. So I'm like, I don't know. There was gunfire. I took advantage. Oh, well, can I not um, turn uninvisible but obfuscate away the suitcase? I don't think you can do that in Masquerade. I know you can do that in um, Requiem. Come on. 
I mean, like, think of it, right? So let's let's say no. I'm thinking of it, and I'm so thinking say, of not doing it. So, <laughs> so let's say the suitcase is tucked under me jacket, and I just obfuscate to be someone fat. If you had some sort of harness rigged up already, I would allow it, but not not in this case. It's just a little bit too separate for from you. I'm invisible then. All right. All right. So anyway, so it's so anyway, I gotta get Houdini out of here. So let's um, we'll move on. Do you know where uh, Jonathan? Do you, where's Ryan? I have no idea. He left before me. Well, we'll just hope that he makes it through. All right. So you guys have right. found each other, but now I'm gonna need another wits plus alertness to get back out. Um, and only one person can be leading the party, so you'll have to decide who you want me to roll for. My role is for, anyone have higher than that. Perception plus alertness, my role? Uh, wits plus alertness. Oh, wits plus alertness, uh, that's still five. I have five. All right. All right. Okay. So, as you guys are going through the maze, you see that there are um, the Teamsters that you fought before, the two injured one, the guy who ran away, along with uh, two other new Teamsters, and then another man who seems to be the leader and is giving them directions. And he orders them all to attack you. Well, that's not good. All right, so give me a... Uh, why did we go... Why Why did I continue into the maze and then, like, head back out the same way? I mean, this is how the wits... Oh, <laughs> you're, you're losing track of things. I'm, I'm really annoyed by this whole thing. All right, so... All right, um, wits plus dexterity from everyone. Um, that's... Wits plus dexterity, that's five. All right. All right. Uh, Jonathan? Wits plus what, sorry? Wits plus dexterity. Five. Is there still gunfire? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Ryan? Seven. All right. Um, so Ekrich, uh does very similar to what you did. Um, he uses movement of the mind to basically knock, take one of the uh, the injured teamsters and just knock him against the side of the wall, and it renders him completely unconscious. Okay. So it is Ryan who goes first. Well, Ryan's invisible. I don't even know he's here. Nope. Did you say I go first? You go first. Or I'll shoot one of them. All right. So give me a dexterity plus firearms. You're going to figure out that he's here. Okay. <laughs> There's just going to be a gunshot right next to you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Five. All right. <laughs> and what's the damage on your gun? Seven. All right. Which one are you shooting at? The leader or one of the, uh, just the Teamsters? Leader, I guess. All right. Are you aiming at the head? No. Okay. Then I need to look up his stats. All right. 
All right. So you hit him directly in the chest, but he does not seem nearly as inconvenienced as a human being ought to. Like, that should have killed him. He's a vampire, because he dominated those girls. I already know that. This is a different guy. Oh. This is is someone else who hates you. Oh. (laughs) I'm sorry. I thought that was the guy from upstairs. No. No, this is is not him. This is somebody else. (laughs) All right. But I'm going to assume vampire now, because of the whole not being inconvenienced by the bullet wound, which materialized to my left. (laughs) (laughs) Um. Oh, I have to roll for his place in the initiative order as well. And he goes next. Um, so the first thing he does is, um. Is Ryan still invisible or do we see him now? No, Ryan's visible now. Okay. All right. So he um, basically takes cover for now and um, starts spending his blood points. He's going to go celerity on us. And then it is the Teamster's turn. Do I need movement of the mind? Do I need to see him? Uh, Yes, I think so. Can I see him? Uh, yeah. He's taking cover, but I can see yes, him. Yes, you can see him. All right. Well, I'm sticking him up in the air. All right. I do not want any frickin' celerity on me. <laughs> when we get to your turn. Okay. All right. And it is uh, the Teamster's turn, and there are a bunch of them now. Crap. All right. So there are three that are uninjured, and they are all going to open fire. And they are going to spread the damage around to the three party members. Each one's going to take a different guy. Right. So, Steven, you had two stamina? Yes. Alright, you're hit, but undamaged. No, you're completely undamaged. Oh, I'm hit, but undamaged. Yeah. Oh, and I never mentioned it, but I, I assume over the course of months, you guys healed your aggravated damage at some point. Yes, I have erased my aggravated damage. So, Jonathan, you are missed. And Ryan is also missed. So, it is now Steven's turn. No, wait, it's Jonathan's turn. All right, then. Can I dread guess any of them? Uh, Yeah. Whichever one you'd like. All right, then. Uh, any recommendations, guys? Um, they're all good. The one who the shot one. you seems like the obvious target. I was going to say, the one looking at you would be the one... Yeah, I let's go with him, then. Yeah. All right. So, oh, parents, parents, plus, parents plus intimidation. Seven. I right. don't think my specialty applies. <laughs> what well, is it? Um, Handsome, but I'm handsome. <laughs> no. <laughs> that is frightening. Yeah, that is. Very angry. Perhaps unless... you've noticed how hot I am. <laughs> oh, maybe maybe he's like afraid of turning gay or something. Might be. <laughs> <laughs> he's That's like, oh, crud. It's a subtler form of fear. <laughs> <laughs> Dealing with his just his base insecurity. Um, yes, he basically panics. Uh, he turns and flees. Completely natural. Now it is Steven's turn. All right, so I'm going to take the guy hunkering down under cover, spending blood points. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to stick him up in the air so he doesn't have anything to push off against so he can't use his word. All right. So there is going to be a levitating man. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you start to lift him up, but he starts uh, struggling against it, and he breaks your hold over okay. him. And it is Ryan's turn. Oh, there's Ethrich, and he does uh, movement of the mind to disable the other injured guy. Just... You know, he could disable one of the non-injured guys. I'm just using the people that are kind of out of the fight to clean each other up. So how many of these thugs are there? There's the there are two left, along with their leader. Okay. And Ryan is up.
Ryan is up. David. Alright. I'm sure he shoots his gun. Yeah. Um, hmm. That's annoying. Hmm. Oh, wait, dipshit. <laughs> It'd be nice if people didn't leave when we're in initiative order and I can't just move around to someone yeah. else. Hmm. Apparently he delays his turn. Let's go yeah, with that. Apparently All right, he delays yeah. his turn. So, uh, the Teamsters go. And because I'm annoyed with David, they're all going to shoot him. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And uh, that's one hit and one miss. And does no damage. All right. So it is, hey, it's the guy who's spending blood points turn. So he's going to spend uh, some more blood points. <laughs> this guy actually has knowledge Marxism 4. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. oh, and Potence 4. Yeah, this guy's going to kick your ass. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he runs the fuck up to you. Oh, me, Steven, no, no. I'm an old man. <laughs> Oh, crap, I'm going to get pounded. He's going to cease your means of production. <laughs> he is going to cease my means of production. Oh, my God. Spouting Marxist nonsense as he pummeled me. Uh, so if you want He's to going use... to politely explain to you why capitalism is a failed system. Um, you can use your reaction to a dodge, but it will... You won't get a turn this turn, basically. Um, is he going to do bat? Does he have any lethal damage? Is um, he just bashing? He's got a baseball bat, but he is aiming at your head, so it's going to be lethal it's damage. Be lethal damage. Uh, so I will dodge, which is, I have nothing, but it's what, dexterity? So I dexterity plus dodge. So it's right. two, two points. You want to spend a willpower point on this? I will spend a willpower point, thank you. All right. Um, since he went for the harder shot, he does... Uh, with you. I'm, I'm able to duck. With his initial blow. Um, it's, it's when he comes back around. Yeah, initiative. he does have two more celerity turns, but celerity turns come at the end of the initiative order. Oh, so, uh, and David's still not back yet. No, he's actually just gone offline completely. All right. Um, so it is wow. Jonathan's turn. Can I bet gaze someone else to have to keep it on his guy? Um, he already, he ran he away in gone. terror, so you can turn your dread gaze nice, on someone I did that good job. Let's dread gaze someone else then. The roll is still seven. Uh, who do you want to do? Uh, this guy with the bat or, um, one of the goons? Yeah. Can you get the guy with the bat off me? <laughs> I was going to say, probably the one, probably the Marxist guy. The professor. Right. Okay. You start talking about how great capitalism is, and then he'll just be terrified. I just look, I look at him like, yell out, hey dude. Capitalism, free market, <laughs> screams one's off. Czarist Russia. Oh wow, this is actually pretty good. Um, I have For to look me, up I exactly. <laughs> this guy's an actual vampire, right, so I'm gonna look up. Apparently, Jonathan is handsomely terrifying. <laughs> oh god, money! It's just nice to show him a dollar bill. <laughs> <laughs> coins at him. Where's, where's that half half dollar that Houdini had? We'll just start throwing money at him. <laughs> so it's actually charisma plus intimidation. Um, but I don't think it's that different for you. Uh, the role is... What was that, sorry? Out. It's actually charisma plus intimidation, not appearance. But I think your charisma and appearance are the same, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Both right. five. So it doesn't matter. Well, it changes my specialty, which still doesn't apply unless captivating counts. All right. No. <laughs> well, actually, yes, it kind of does. Um, but you don't get you. you didn't get any tens, so. Okay. 
Um, actually, with three or more successes, the victim runs away in terror. <laughs> so, so he's taken a swing at Stephen's head. It's his wits plus courage, but those are some pretty high numbers. I don't. Think so this giant, like, how old is this guy? Big six foot five motherfucker. No, he's really no, not. not. He that, just has he has that. potence. He has potence. Okay. <laughs> but he's taken a swing at Stephen, and an old man's head glances over at you, becomes terrified. And runs off using Solari, that would be hilarious. Um, so, uh, let's see, wits, all sets, oh shit, he does not run away in abject terror, he has very high courage, he is only, I think, paralyzed. Well, that's fine, I'll I'll take it, I'll take it. If he had one less courage, he would have actually just fled completely. Nice. So does that negate his celerity turn? Um. Shouldn't it? I would, uh, I'm going to hope for it. He cannot perform any action. He is so shaken and terrified that he curls up on the ground and weeps. Oh, okay, good <laughs> enough. Good enough. I'm going to say that negates his celerity. I am oh, no, wait. Thing. Here's what it does. Uh, each That's when he has no more dice pool. Um, each success subtracts one from the target's dice pool the next turn. So Or this turn, since he has celerity moves. Okay. Oh, he is going to do um, So he is still going to attack you. But with less dice? With less dice, yeah. Okay. Still the same amount of potence, though. Still the same amount of potence. Is David back yet? Nope. I never left. Oh, there he is. What the fuck? You, you absolutely did, motherfucker. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and now it can be Ryan's turn. Ryan, get this guy off me. So yeah, this guy yeah. pumped a ton of celerity. He's got a shit ton of potence, and he's trying to beat Steven to he's, death. He's trying to he's trying to knock my head off. My computer froze. I could hear you guys the whole time. All right. Wow. Shoot <laughs> him in the head. All right. So uh, Dex plus firearms. Six. No five. Sorry. Um, that is a miss. Damn. All right. Useless. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I know, I know. Jonathan's turned out to be quite helpful in this fight. So this guy uh, takes a couple of swings at you. Okay, crap. He hits once. And he misses. Okay. So the hit, he deals... I should have just put a post-it on this guy's fucking thing. You should. There we go. You need my wow. No, I've got it. I'll just put my finger in it. Oh, crud. This is gonna hurt. This is gonna hurt! Alright, uh, what's your stamina? Two. Um... So you take seven points of bashing damage, or of normal damage. Normal damage, so that makes me incapacitated. All right, you're incapacitated. Yeah. You're not in torpor, uh, but you are <laughs> laid the fuck out. Okay. Steven, <laughs> Steven's unconscious. Just. Uh, you, you are, just te- shed or you you are technically still conscious, but you're basically just laying on the ground, just, right. <laughs> just waiting for it to stop hurting. Okay. You, you can start. Shed your since you're not doing anything else, you can't start can spending spend blood, blood points. Okay. Yeah. No. Well, I was going to say, I only have six things here. What does seven do to me? How? I take seven. I mean, I only got six boxes. No, you're on seven. You're in oh, on incapacitated. Oh, okay. Sorry, I couldn't All right. You had a master's degree in science, Mary. Right, I know. I can't do math. An ability to count to seven. Um, All right. All righty. So... Uh, that was that move. And then we are actually uh, back around to Ryan. Uh, How many bullet points can I find this one? One? Yeah. Shoot him in the head. All right. 
Yeah, don't, don't you have better melee? Smash me again. You want to spend a willpower point on this? Don't you have better <laughs> melee than you do with firearms? I have a combat knife, so it's not my my proper weapon, but it still is right melee. Yeah, but then I'll be in melee range of the enemy. That's true. You want to stay away and what? keep him on your tank. <laughs> the old man. You wouldn't want to get anywhere near that bat. Because apparently it deals I mean, seven... You do points. actually hit him, just barely, and you have five damage on your gun? Yeah. No, seven damage. All right. Can I taunt for my... I'll spend, the, uh, I'll spend a blue point for celebrity next turn. All right. All right. So yeah, this guy takes another uh, bullet to the head. I lost my fucking pencil. Oh, I took it because I needed to wipe off my thing. I just need the eraser now. Is that having an eraser? Well, I know. I said I have, <laughs> I have an eraser. Right. I didn't have a pencil. Okay. So it is his turn, and. Uh, he, he doesn't want to approach Jonathan because he's scared of him, so he's going to attack Ryan instead. <laughs> the weaker of the two. The weaker of the two. Um, well, I was going to say, unless he spent more celebrity points. Uh, he did. Oh, okay. Alright, so he takes a swing at your head, Ryan. Mm hmm. And what is your uh, stamina? Drink. Oh, uh, oh, but yeah, that's true. I was just thinking, you got that combat helmet, but you didn't have the opportunity to, um, because you're in the club. I mean, I just obfuscate my clothes, so I could have it on. Um, yeah, it's true. You weren't expecting to get into combat, so that shouldn't have been a problem. Um, so I'll add, doesn't matter, um, it's the same. So you take two points of damage, okay. and you can tell that he's celeritied up, so he's going to take another swing at you at the end of the initiative order. It is, uh, Jonathan's turn. So we've taken out both of the... Oh, um... Just keep dread casing. The, your other two guys are taking care of... Oh. The goons at this point. Okay. Just keep dread casing. All right. Since it's been working so well, this is where it goes horribly wrong, Miles. You know that. <laughs> Why did you have to jinx me? Well, I'm trying to not jinx you. I mean, I'm um, it doesn't get any worse, but you're still holding, you're still kind of holding him captivated in fear of you, but it. It doesn't improve any. Okay. That's fine. That's all I wanted. Yeah. <laughs> you just, I just need to protect myself. <laughs> so yeah, the goons are shooting at Akrich, and he disables one of them with thaumaturgy. And uh, it is Stephen's turn, and you're just going to heal? I'm going to spend a blood point and heal, okay. so I can get up at least. All right. And move up into a sitting position. And this guy is going to take a couple more swings at Ryan. He's going to hit once, and he's going to miss once. Alright. Alright, and you take uh, four points of normal damage. So Ryan's pretty much fine now, too. Me, yeah. Yep, to you. Okay. All right. So Jonathan better hope his dread case oh, kicks in pretty soon. Better, yeah. All right. Oh, boy. <laughs> There's a timer on this. No, we're back to the top I'm of the initiative It is Ryan's turn. All right, so I'm on six timers, so I'm on a minus five penalty, is it? Yep. All right. No problem. <laughs> not, not problem. You got this. I believe in you. If you spend one point to heal, I think it pushed down to back to two. Minus two, isn't it? 
Can I do can I do thaumaturgy when I'm crippled? Can I spend a blue point to heal in combat? I think so, yeah. Combat? Um you can do it in combat, but it requires a roll. Um I think it's stamina plus survival. For thaumaturgy? That's, that no. is actual oh. to heal in combat. That's actually six. Ryan has three survival. Alright. <laughs> ah, impressive. Um, yes, it goes off. You heal in combat. Alright, cool. Now, did, that didn't take a turn, did it? No. Um, it, it's You can just sit there and heal, and it goes off no problem. You can heal while you do other yeah. things if you make that roll successfully. Oh, I get you. Alright, cool. So I've got my two Stamina points. plus survival. Like four for that. It's not bad. Have to do... Okay. okay. Oh, can I have the stats for a combat knife? I never got them. Um, it's just it's plus, plus one, one to damage. All right. Well, I whip out my combat knife, and I'll try to stab him in the face. All right, what's your uh, dex plus melee minus your wound penalty? Yeah, so minus two, right? So minus two now, yeah, so that's uh, five. All right. So that's my first turn on stabbing him. Yeah, you hit him. All right, how is he looking? Um, give me your strength plus one. Four. Uh, minus two is two. And then my potence. Um, he's still looking fine. And um, celerity turns come at the end of the initiative order, so you and he will get them at the same time. So he goes now, and he is going to attempt a rebuttal. Oh, okay. So, oh, okay. And then I get my second turn. So what happens is, with celerity, is when you're in initiative order, you go all the way through the initiative order. Anyone who has celerity turns then does them at the end. Um, and then we start a new round over again. Oh, cool. So since you're ahead of him in the initiative order, when we get into celerity turns, you will use your celerity turns before he uses his. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Alright, but this is his regular turn. Um, and he misses. So Efrich disables uh, the last teamster. Um, and it is Jonathan's turn. You already know what I'm doing. All <laughs> Just roll right. those sevens. Uh, yes. Yep. Yeah. All right. So he is, seems even more afraid of you than he was previously. Nice. <laughs> You're just sitting there, just growling. I'm not doing anything, but looking he's so just stand, he's fucking just standing there, pissed. menacingly. Okay, he's so just here's, standing there, here's what menacingly. Stephen wants to do. Since he's so afraid of Jonathan, he's gonna pick. Stephen will move Jonathan and move him into the mind toward him <laughs> to make him run away. Um, it is your turn. It is my turn. Can I try the heal to come in the combat so I yes. can still do another um, thaumaturgy? Remember, it, you can't do thaumaturgy because thaumaturgy also costs a blood point, and you can only spend one oh, blood point per turn. Okay. Does my wound penalty count against thaumaturgy? I don't think it does because it's not a physical action. Although I don't know it's really I'm confusing doing. what wound penalties do and don't. And apply probably to. if I just shoved him against a wall, that's not going to do much. Against probably not. You could try and lift him up again. Well, he seemed to. I could. And then Ryan could take a swing at him without him moving around. Yeah. I guess I'll give that a try. I'll try and lift him up again. Oh, uh, I forgot to add my potions on the damage. I already added it for you. All right, bro. Yes, you are able to suspend him in the air. All right. So All right, he's a pinata now, Ryan. Uh, Ryan, it is your turn. Your celerity turn comes up. I bite into his neck. All right. 
Um, there's not really any way for him to resist you. So yes, you can bite into his neck. Uh, uh, give me a uh, dexterity plus brawl just to get a hold of him. Um, but he's not going to be able to resist you. Six. All right. Is that with your wound penalty? Four. All right. Yeah, you grab a hold of him. And um, I think you're able to take three blood points per turn in combat. I'm pretty sure. Do that. All right, and now I'm going to have to actually keep track of his blood points because he has spent... All right. So you feel uh, blood rush into your mouth, and you are uh, almost overcome with the ecstasy of it. As you start to drink his blood, you can definitely sense that he is a lower generation than you are. All right, good. All right, so you gain three blood points. He loses three. Um, and he is pretty much unable to do anything this turn. Uh, with the Teamsters down, uh, Ethrich uh, comes over to you, uh, Ryan. Uh, and he waits for... Uh, your turn comes first, so you are able to uh, drain another three blood points if you want. Is this is this guy important? Who was he? Um, you don't know. He we is don't know an who anarch. is. He was after us. Um, Efrich has come over to speak to you. I'm sure he's going to say something as you're draining. You are not to the point of diablerizing him yet. So if I take three more points, if I take three more points, he won't get diablerized. No, not yet. No, not yet. Just take three more points then. All right. So, uh, on his turn, Everidge comes up to you and basically tells you to stop before you actually diablerize him. Okay. Do you... Is it my turn again? Um, yeah, you can choose if you want to or not. Alright, fine, I'll stop. Alright, give me a self-control roll. <laughs> Four. Alright. Difficulty higher because of all the shit that's going down. And your derangement. Yes, you do stop. Very good, Ryan. Um, so, basically, as soon as you've let go of him, he's pretty much out of blood. He is injured at this point, and um, Everidge just stabs him in the heart with a, t with a stake. Um, obviously, there's you can't just leave him here, so he just throws him over his shoulder. <laughs> Fire carry him out, I guess. Um, and since this fight took so long, I'm going to immediately roll for another encounter. Can I spend a blood point and yes. at least get on my feet? Yeah, you can start spending okay. as many blood myself? points as you want to, to heal yourselves. Okay. Cool. Can I take some blood pills as well? Yeah. Okay. So I could just spend five and heal all the rest of my five damage. Yeah, you guys have like a sit down for a few seconds just to recuperate Gone. before the next thing happens to you. So what does the helmet add to my resistance sack? Does it just add one across the board? I think it's two, but I'd have to look up the stats. I added two, um, and I'll look it up when we're finished. Okay. They were none of the, the the helmet dice were ever successes, so it didn't matter. There we go. All right, so as you guys are uh, basically recuperating, you see a young woman uh, basically skirt by you. She looks at you guys, and then she runs off down a hallway. Ignore, leave area. 
<laughs> Let's just get out of here. Let's just get out. Of here. But something mysterious might happen. No, whatever. We're going. Just, we got our asses beat. We're fucking finished. We're done. We're getting to the car. I'm texting Terry. All right. Have the car at the freaking back door and let's go. All right. Give me one more uh, wits plus alertness. Um, uh, what, Ryan, what's your wits plus alertness? Get us out of this damn maze, Ryan. Let's put it out. I updated uh, my Jonathan's uh, portrait art. Wits plus alertness. All right. So, as you are trying to make your way out, um, you hear raised voices engaged in heated debate. Uh, Marxism versus The word seems muffled by the walls, but as you move closer, you can make out what's being said. Um, A young man is... Uh, shouting at his girlfriend over, uh, apparently, like, she was spending time with the owner of the club, and they're having a lover's quarrel here in the midst of the gunfire. In the midst of the gunfire. Uh, emotions are running high. Apparently. Um, yeah. Uh, sh- should we stop and get involved? <laughs> I think we need a little counseling here for these couple. You know, one to get their priorities straight amidst the gunfire. Oh, we'll move on. You gotta move on? Yeah, okay. Is Lucy still with us? Is she yeah, dead? she's still with you. <laughs> she, she would stop, but she's ready to get out as well. <laughs> um, and you guys are just having a hard time escaping. Oh my god, let us out, please. <laughs> you guys just pulled the gun fight <laughs> encounter again. I'm gonna re-roll that. Oh my god, you just pulled it a second time. <laughs> okay, enough. You guys need to roll different fucking encounters. Oh, it's okay, don't worry. Uh, as you are trying desperately to escape, you hear odd sounds coming from one hallway. Uh, as you try and investigate, you discover that we the noises... We do not try and investigate, no, fuck off! As you stumble past, you see that the noises are coming from two individuals finding rapture in each other's okay, arms. Okay, alright, they're having sex, okay? Uh, fine. Let's move <laughs> on! Right, hold on, sex you say. Hold on. Are you gonna stop and see the people having sex? No, no, no. I want out of here. I'm joking. Oh, you finally, finally make it out. Okay, now let's go back and find those people having sex. All right. <laughs> we'll come back to pick you up later, Jonathan, okay? All right. Let me see what happens to you as you are escaping. I love this. God, I'm never going into the labyrinth again. What kind of fucking place has an actual labyrinth? All right. So Don't you guys are... Um, you guys make it out. Um, it looks like the Teamsters have basically kind of disbanded after the shit that goes down. You're able to get out of the door, make it out into the alleyway. You know where uh, Terry is parked a little ways this, away. Well, I texted him to get his yes. ass over here, so... Um, he can't get into the alleyway. Cause well, it's, whatever. He's at the end of yeah. the alley, so we're going... Um, well, actually, there's someone else at the end of the oh. alley. Yeah. Um, there are... There is another man with a pair of goons who, uh, they didn't really come up, but you saw them traveling with Nikolai before. Oh, crap. So, as uh, they say you escaping with Eckrich, uh, they start pulling weapons, and we're back into initiative. We're back into initiative again. But Terry's around the corner, right? He can help in this one. <laughs> uh, he's somewhere. All right, so wits plus dexterity. We'll start with Can Steven. Can run him over with the car? <laughs> yeah, the alley's not big enough. What's your wits plus dexterity? Uh, it's fine. Uh, you guys healed all the way up. Yes, I did, but good lord above. Jonathan? Wits plus dexterity is still five. All right. Ryan? Seven. Alright. 
guys actually got out without too much problem. Yeah, I was incapacitated. <laughs> Besides that, you kept pulling like romantic encounters for some reason. Well, that's because the gunfight we pulled like seven or eight times. So then you just re-rolled it. Yeah, that's true. And now I have to find a new guy's stats. Oh, get a headache. All right. <laughs> the headache. I have a sympathetic headache from Steven getting knocked in the head. <laughs> and Jonathan goes first. Okay. Now, what do you think I should do? Um. Open fire. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. If he if he has Solari. Can he look at them real into Nah, you can only do it. It specifically says you can only do it once per turn. Damn. I go cross eyed. <laughs> no, it's Dread Case, obviously. Alright. Roll still seven. Specialty. On one of the goons or the guy who looks to be in charge? Uh, well, the goons can. Do we have someone to handle that? Can Terry handle that? Um, Terry's not here yet. Ah, uh, fuck. Uh, if I can make one of the goons run away, let's go with that. Alright. Because I probably can't make the guy in charge run away. Okay. Um, so you look at one of the goons, and he absolutely just, like, drops his shit. Like, he just throws everything <laughs> to the ground, and he just turns and it was fucks like it. That, that Minecraft <laughs> when Gavin was running and he just poop. <laughs> 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 the guy runs away. Yeah, this guy just runs... And sprints the fuck away. So it nice. is Lion's turn. No, wait. Sorry, it's the boss man's turn. So let's see. How much celerity can he pop? Oh, not that much. Oh. So he is going to look at Ryan and uh, yeah, tell you... Not to... see my message. What was that? Not see my message? Oh, that's true. You're invisible. That's right. You can't do that. Um, he Thank doesn't you. want. Hmm. In that case, he's just gonna open fire. And he'll start shooting at Jonathan. He's the major threat Why? here. No, You're the major so threat. You've done most of the damage. <laughs> one out of one. Well, I suppose he doesn't know about the wreckage you caused down below. He does hit you. Okay. That's this main. Alright, what is your stamina? Oh, it's a whopping two. Alright. So you take one point of normal damage as you get shot in the head. Okay, I will heal that up during waiting for Nick's turn if I can. Alright, so it is Ryan's turn. Spend a point for celerity. Alright. I'll attempt to get behind Nikolai and stop him with a stake. Um, it's not Nikolai, it's someone else. I thought it was Nikolai, sorry. <laughs> no, it is not Nikolai. If it was this were Nikolai, you would be dead already. Yeah. It was Nikolai's goons and someone else? Yeah, it's Nikolai's there? goons and someone else, who seems to be in charge of the goons, so possibly some sort of Tremere neonate. Okay, I will I will stop this mom in the heart. Alright. Stake. Give me a dexterity plus a uh, melee. Seven. Okay. All right, you hit. So what is your strength? And I think it's plus three for a stake. All right, so that's six plus one potence. I'll spend a willpower point. Okay. He didn't buff his strength up to ten. So Not this could, time, apparently. So that he could stake the human. I can only spend one uh, blood point per turn, so can't do that. Didn't, didn't have time. Didn't have time to fuck yourself up like that. All 
Uh, yes, actually, you completely, you stab him in the back, drop obfuscate, and he is completely disabled. He just collapses on the ground. Start drinking his blood. <laughs> Alright. Jesus Christ, mate. We're not are, you not addi- are you addicted yet? We're gonna get around to your turn in a bit. Um, it is the last goon's turn. And, um, he is going to try and run away as well. So, Steven, you're up. You can see two guys running away, and then a staked vampire. All right, and and Ryan looking hungrily. And Ryan looking at it hungrily, yes. Yeah, so I'm going to go uh, get between Ryan and the uh, Tremere. All right. No, 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 stop the guy from running away. He can't report. And stop him. Well, there are two guys running yeah, away. I was going to say, the other guy already ran away. We're reported. Nikolai's going to know what we've done. Uh, oh. Oh. Yeah, you did that. Why are you upset that he's running away? <laughs> no, I really, I just wanted to not save Ryan. Because mm. I want to see Ryan get fucked up. All right. So, yes, uh, so uh, we're out of initiative. So, yeah, you can interpose yourself, Ryan. Okay. You're so, about to try and feed on this guy when Steven steps in. And I will say no. no I'm no. feeling mighty confident all of a sudden. <laughs> This is the biggest self-esteem boost Jonathan has ever know, had in his I life. Know. He's like, I am truly scary. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> He's going to spend all of experience points on intimidation from, yeah, now, on. from now on. Fuck yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want ten. Anyway, Absolutely. so now we've got a staked Tremere, which obviously I'm going to have to return to the Chicago Chantry. Possibly a Tremere. Um, possibly. At least a servant of Nikolai. Yeah, so um, we will return him unharmed. All right. So, so you throw him over someone's shoulder, so, yeah, and Terry pulls up in the car. And Terry pulls up in the car, and, and, and the 19 of us that are now in the party climb in. Yeah, so let's see. You can throw the two staked guys in the trunk. Um, Gibson uh, and Efrich have their own escape means, so once you guys are out of danger, they say they will go their own way. Okay. We should split up. Um, I thought I was going to talk to Houdini more after he got Gibson home. Shit has gone down, my man. <laughs> well, crap. I'm... He's like, you can take care of these steak bodies. I'll be in touch. I guess. Re- well, are, do they both belong to Nikolai? Um, this one, probably. Uh, this one, he points at the guy you fought in the labyrinth. No, he's an anarch. So who do I return him to? You'll figure it out, dude. There's someone trying to kill my friend. That guy who talked to those two ladies who attacked us is someone completely different. He's the <laughs> third guy. We have got to get out of here. And he takes Gibson okay. and he starts well, power why walking did he away. Get in trouble with this. <laughs> yes. Crap. Oh crap! I hate it. I hate the. I hate it when my clan hates me. And I don't want my clan to hate me. All right. Shit. So Everidge disappears with the old man, and you guys are left alone. All right. Well, with like two more bodies in the trunk. Two more bodies. Well, okay. Well, we gotta figure out a way to. All right. Well, do we have? Do I have Damien's phone number? Uh, no. Oh, by the way, that guy oh, that's way. staked in your basement. He's also an anarch. So if you want to return him at the same time, <laughs> you can let me diablerize him. Then I'll get rid of one of them. No, point. you're not gonna diablerize anybody. Why not? Let me diablerize the anarch. Who cares? <laughs> Uh, Lucy takes you aside and explains that, uh, diablery is even more wrong than murder. Okay. So, I am so glad Lucy is here, honestly, because, like, I'm like, how long have you been a vampire? You know this is bad. Okay. So, so, does, does Terry have Damien's number? Um. Does somebody have Damien's number? No, Jonathan may have had it, but his and phone his was, phone. yeah, Damn. Okay. you've lost it by this point. How do we get in touch with the Anarchs again? They met at that warehouse, but then they... Yeah, started. you're gonna have to think about that. Okay. Um, Horace, doesn't he, isn't he like... He's supposed Anarch? to be with the Anarch, yeah. Okay, maybe I can go talk to him. I'm, I'm certainly not going anywhere near the Chantry. I don't know what we're gonna do about this premiere. Yeah, so through. you're able to basically successfully get away. What exactly, yeah, how are you planning on disposing these bodies? Um, um, all right. So, so, they're stakes. Yeah. Um, if we take the stakes out of them, 
They'll be unstaked. They will be unstaked. And that will not be good. Um, Keep them in the freezer as bargaining chips. Yeah, I highly doubt Nikolai's going to bargain for some neonate premiere. I just I don't really think he's going to. Um, and I don't even know who to bargain with for the other guy. <laughs> so he could be important. I don't know. I don't know who he is. Yeah, but if you just want to leave him in the basement for now, you can just keep him on hand. Come on, not you. You'll have like three. I've got three, three people. I, I did write down basement. that I do have a Tremere. Collect them all. Tremere and, uh, okay, so, and apparently two Anarchs. So two Anarchs and a possible Tremere. One possible Tremere in my, um, Oh God, my 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 son is gonna kill me. <laughs> She's gonna kill me. Um, Load bombs him first, and then awaken the Tremere. Ye absolutely can't do that. I mean, you don't know that he's a Tremere yet, but if he is, oh then my that God, would no, be. We are not blood bonded. That would be it. No, no, no. That no, would. No, 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 yeah, no. the clan would absolutely kill. Oh my God, him we'd be if dead. he tried that. Okay, stake in the Anarchs. We can blood bond. I'm sure you're already dead for having this stakes Tremere, aren't you? No, that's actually not nearly as bad. If he blood bonded him, that uh -huh. would be the worst thing. But See, just I having really, a stake Tremere really isn't that bad. This, I really want to get this possible Tremere back to the Chantry unstaked. I really do. I don't want to be having that in my basement, because I really feel like that would be a black mark on my record. I mean, the fact that he got staked is bad. Yeah. But that yeah. happens. Yeah, but me keeping him in my basement? Yeah. That's not so good. So how exactly do you want to handle the return? Is there a way to unstake him when I'm not a <laughs> Um, Is there like a time delay stake that will pop out? I mean, you could just deliver him somewhere staked, and someone else could unstake him. Okay, and then like call the chantry from a payphone and say, hey, go there and... Yeah, you could do that. Okay. So is there like a out-of-the-way place I can stash this guy? In Gary, yeah, because half the city's burned down. Well, I didn't know we were going back to Gary. I figured on the outside. Um, you're not really Chicago. you're not really familiar with Chicago, okay. so... Alright, so I guess we'll do that. And then I will, uh... <laughs> Alright, so what's... What... Give me the transcript of the threatening message you leave to the Chantry. No, 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 no. <laughs> From one of the many burner phones I have, so uh -huh. it's untraceable. Yeah. With, like, a muffled thing <laughs> With a your... muffled thing, with a voice modulator. It's mm -hmm. like, your guy is in, is at, you know, the corner of 12th and Main, or whatever, wherever I've left him, I leave him the address. That's it. Okay. That's it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I, do not have a I can't believe you didn't want to leave a threatening message. No, I don't. <laughs> you shouldn't have fucked with us. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not even going to. No. So I have two Anarch stakes in my basement. All right. The other guy that I'm assuming is blood bound to me by this point. So here's the um, other thing is as you're getting back home, you do hear uh, a report on the news. Oh, God, it's something else on fire. So apparently there has been a breaking news development in the tanker murderer's story. Mm -hmm. So they, found the guy. they have discovered um, that they found the initial site of the fire mm -hmm. where it began. Um, confirmed probably was the tanker. They find they found a series of bodies there, which they have now identified. Um, the first is the person that the tanker murderer is carried off after shooting him, as seen on the footage. Mm -hmm. um, that's the gas station guy. Okay. Mm -hmm. So his body was obviously burned up, but they still found it. Um, as well as a series of, a pair of other bodies, um, which were also badly burned, but were definitely killed with gunshots. So the FBI has been called in because they now believe that the tanker murderers and arsonists, uh, it was a work of domestic terrorism. Mm -hmm. So FBI key. agent... Uh, William Shepard has been called in, and Derek recognizes that name mm -hmm. because that's the agent that he talked to before 
and the guy who took the bloodless animal man body from the police raid. Mm. So you don't know what the so FBI... the other two bodies? Did we kill more people there? I don't remember killing more people there. You don't know about the two bodies. That's another little surprise. Yeah, okay. So the FBI agent, you don't know what he knows, but obviously he knows something because mm -hmm. he re took the bloodless animal man body. He knew Derek. So he is now directly in charge of the investigation. Um, and he is collaborating with uh, Detective Stevens with the Gary Police Department. And they are expanding the investigation to find the two people responsible. And he's a hunter, we suspect, right? Yes. Oh, and there's one other also piece of breaking news. Apparently, authorities have just discovered that during the fire, a prisoner transfer was taking place, and the man, a Mr. Sullivan Dane, who was found with a series of weapons and who was believed to be uh, violently schizophrenic, mm -hmm. um, escaped. Yeah, escaped. So he is loose as well. Jonathan will be through. And yeah, Sullivan Dane, you recognize the name because he was the guy who was arrested at the New Year's Eve party. He's a hunter, basically. Yeah. So he is also now on the loose as a result of the fire. Okay, and this is the guy that has the bloodless animal man. And that is where we'll, we will be ending the story for this week. All right. So we'll start off with what did we learn? We will begin with uh, Stephen. Um, I learned that Jonathan is dang scary, is what I learned. All right. <laughs> I was going to take that one. And uh, Miles, what did you learn? Can I say a little about the efficacy of uh, Dread Case? No, all right, I'll allow it. And uh, David. Houdini's a vampire. Okay. So now we are going to... Uh, you guys can only vote for it. So it's going to be Steven who has to decide which of those two gets the role-playing okay, so award. I'll, I'll, I'm giving it to Miles because, all right. because of the whole... Because of the whole growling and, you know, whatever. <laughs> All right, so Miles, you get four experience points. The rest of you get three. And we have a suitcase full of money and drugs, correct? And you guys get a suitcase full of money and drugs. And no. So, um, the drugs, no. you can obviously send off to LeBron. He is... I mean, you're already... Unless, unless Ryan wants to take the drugs on his own, what, what use of drugs do you, Ryan? I kept the tape for my stuff while I've been messaging you about this. What was that? Messaging you about this. I kept the suitcase to myself. All right. Um, all right, yeah. You probably, in the midst of the chaos... I don't know. Uh, Jonathan and Stephen, give me perception plus alertness <laughs> rolls to see if you would have noticed. Um, uh, five. five. So Stephen absolutely noticed. And so did Jonathan. <laughs> yeah, everyone saw the suitcase. It's mine. I, I, just, I just want the drugs. You can have the drugs. Okay, thank you. All right, so yeah, LeBron will definitely take those. Okay. You know, he has been basically increasing demands for drugs. Uh, yeah, he's been no, helping quite right. a bit of money. You can keep the money. I realize you got a woman to support now, Ryan. All right. So I will roll to see just how much cash it is. Um, it is $1,000. Cool. And so you, when you split it with Lucy, get $500 of it. No. <laughs> uh, you're pretty bloodbound to her by now. I mean, and she smiles. So she's really nice. You. And she needs a new pair of shoes. She does need new clothes. No. Better yet, she'll take you shopping for some new clothes as well. Oh, that's what I think she spends the money on. Because... I resist. So, well, give me a willpower roll. <laughs> Seven. 
this is like difficulty right. 12, well, right? I'm going to head off and see you next week then. All right. See you, Miles. Um, see ya. Yeah, you fail. So you do lose the $500, but you do gain a, a very nice new yeah. couple sets of clothes, some nice pants. You are stylish. Some polo shirts, you know, some khakis. Mm-hmm. Um, Which she does make you wear. <laughs> Which you will be wearing from now on. Cool. <laughs> I'll be silent. <laughs>